All right, magandang magandang umaga po sa ating mga pag-asa ng bayan. Syempre po ang mga kabataan. And for everyone joining us across the globe, both for the young ones and the young ones. Good afternoon and good evening to all of you. With the filing of candidacies next month and the campaign period leading to the national elections in May 2022, the power of the youth to steer a national consensus on who will lead the country is very very crucial. Sabi nga po nila, the youth vote can make or break the elections with about 40 million young Filipinos eligible to vote next year. Kaya naman po in this webinar, the resource speakers will talk about the youth's participation every election season as well as the role of voters can play in a democracy. Welcome to the second installment of the National Forum on Communication and Democracy, Philippine Elections 2022. Bata-bata, mulat ka na ba? The Youth Vote in 2022. I am Jules Giyang from Rappler and I will serve as your host and moderator for today's program which may also be viewed via live streaming on the YouTube at TVUP channel and as well as the TVUP and the Philippines Communication Society Facebook pages and of course, cross-posted at the Rappler social media platform. May live tweeting din pong nangyayari, so please use our official hashtag that is hashtag PCS Forum Series. Alright? Sama po yan sa mga post ninyo, gamitin nyo po ang ating official hashtag. Once again, that is hashtag PCS Forum Forum series. But of course, before we begin, let me acknowledge the following first. We would like to thank the University of the Philippine System. Thank you so much. Together with the Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs, the Philippines Communication Society, the UP Information Technology Development Center or ITDC, TVUP, the Internet Television Network of the University of the Philippines, and everyone who has helped to make this forum series possible. All right, And because we have a lot of faculty and students watching us today, especially here on Zoom, mamaya po, babatiin ko po lahat ng mga uh, nandito sa Zoom. Sinasabi na rin po nila kung taga sa ang schools and areas sila. So just keep them coming. Babanggitin ko po yan mamaya. Alright, so nabanggit ko nga po na maraming mga faculty and students ang nanunood po sa atin ngayon. PCS members who have watched at least 50% of the webinar duration will be receiving a certificate of attendance as a benefit of their PCS membership. Yan po, nakikita nyo ito sa inyong mga screens. And if you have not applied or renewed your membership yet, this is your chance to be part of the premier organization that represents the communication discipline to the Philippine Social Science Council. The online membership form is available on the PCS website. That is uh, philscomsoc.org slash membership. Diyan po kayo pwedeng mag-register. Nakikita niyo po ang link sa ating screen. All right. At dahil ito nga po ay isang National Forum on Communication and Democracy, we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to be heard. So we're using a Mentimeter. Okay, may Mentimeter po tayo para makasali ang ating mga viewers sa Facebook and YouTube. We encourage everyone to please participate in our mini quiz. Ayan po, nakikita niyo po sa ating screen. Madali lang po ito, kaya sali na po tayong lahat. Your answers will be discussed during our panel discussion. Kaya very participative po ang ating uh, forum this morning. And later on, makikita niyo rin po how the other viewers have answered. Okay. Again, for all our viewers, including those in Facebook and YouTube, please open your browser and go to menti.com and fill in the menti code that is 63431213 or you may simply scan the QR code on your screens right now. Or ayan, handa na po ba tayong lahat? Dahil ako po, ready ready na. Kaya naman, umpisahan na natin ang ating talakayan ngayong umaga. To get the bata bata mulat ka na ba the youth vote in 2022 off to a good start, let us hear a few words from Chancellor Brother Francisco de la Rosa FSC of the De La Salle University Das Marinas, herein represented by the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. Welcome, po, Dr. Marco Saez. Magandang umaga po sa inyo. 
Hello Jules, magandang umaga sa iyo sa mga nagpa-participate dito sa Zoom, mga 250 na yata and or millions hopefully viewers in YouTube and Facebook. Yes, Dr. Saiz, before you begin po with the formal opening remarks, curious lang po ako. Ah, uh, syempre po, maraming nagsasabi na bakit parang politically apathetic daw po yung mga kabataan ngayon. Kamusta po ba kabataan at student leaders ng Las Saldas Marina, sir? Kakasimula pa lang ng aming pasukan. Ah, uh, kaso na ano eh, na suspend ngayong araw na ito. Uh, but we've been preparing them for the start of the school year as far as apathy is concerned. Ano rin naman yan, hindi rin naman sila ligtas sa ganong impression. But I'd like to believe that our students and our student leaders have been very active uh, in the interests that they have chosen, whether it's political, uh, the sciences, or the arts. Uh, at the bottom, at the end of it all, what we just hope for them is that they will be using this not just to benefit themselves, but their communities and the nation as well. Correct. Okay, so tingin ko sir, nasasabik na marinig ng ating mga viewers ang inyong opening remarks. So please, Dr. Saiz, go ahead with your brief message. Salamat, Jules. Marami pong salamat una sa mga organizers sa UP, sa TVUP, at sa PSC para po sa... Uh, for allowing the LSUD to take part in this very important event. I just have two points to bring to the table. So if TVUP can help me out, I would like to show a picture that would help me drive my point. Um, this is actually, I think for journalism students, particularly photojournalism students, this exercise is already very familiar to you. You see here, by the way, Martin Luther King, um, he's known, I think all of us know him as one of the most prominent leaders in civil rights movement of America. And this happened during the, if I'm not mistaken, the Chicago Freedom Movement. Um, you would see identical pictures, but at the same time, they can have more than one interpretation. You could actually see this if you're going to focus on the left side as Martin Luther King being mobbed by men. On the other hand, you can actually see this as, or interpret this as Martin Luther King being protected by these men because he was asked to uh, go on that low post dahil natatamaan siya ng bato and they would want to protect him from being hit again. So TVUP, you can take uh, out the picture in the meantime. Thank you. So the first point is there are so many ways in framing um, personalities events, and even discourses such as this. So it's important for our youth, and I guess not just the youth, for everyone to exercise a critical mind and not just focus on the message, uh, but also see and learn where the message is coming from, who is delivering it, how is it being conveyed, and even at the time in which it is being released, I think all these would come into play to come to a very informed decision on this coming elections. And that's something that I think especially our youth should be mindful of. So that's the first point. The second point is, again, TVUP, if you could just kindly show them the picture again. I'm going to traverse from the field of communications to psychology. Some psychologists believe that our ways of interpreting things would actually be influenced, or if you want to be radical about it, dictated by our value system. So it might be safe to hypothesize that those that would see this as an act of violence may have a different value system than those who would see this as an act of heroism. So TVUP, thank you for showing that. Please take it out again. So the second point is, it's not only, I think, the mind that we should be uh, mindful of, but nakakatawa naman, mind, mindful. We should also be on guard as far as our conscience and our hearts are concerned. Um, our value system would determine how we are going to evaluate the situation and the proper actions that we will be taking. I guess we need to have a clear heart and a clear conscience this coming elections. For some, it is achieved through meditation, but for others, like many of us, prayers, prayers really help. Prayers really help clear our spirits. So that's the second point. So only two points to bring to the table for today's discussion. Number one, I think our youth should be vigilant against any form of manipulation from any sector uh, as we approach the 2022 elections. But at the same time, they should guard their hearts. It should be in the right places and their conscience because 
that would determine their action and the decision that they will be making. Um, it's not only important the youth participate in today's elections, but they should participate wisely and conscientiously. So marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat at salamat po sa ganitong opportunity. Thank you, Jules. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for setting the tone for the discussion today. Thank you once again to Dr. Marco Saez. Very important, sir, no, yung nabanggit ninyo na the youth should be on the right track, especially uh, from manipulation. Kailangan maging uh, malinis yung, yung puso natin mismo dahil ito yung gagabay sa atin sa pagkakaroon ng isang maayos na desisyon para sa paparating na 2022 elections. And sir, we understand that you have to lead for an important student orientation, so we would like to give our heartfelt gratitude for making the time to join us this morning. Thank you once again. That was Dr. Marco Saez. All right. So now, time now for our mini quiz. You may now start answering the Mentimeter poll on your screen. Once again, just simply go to menti.com and fill in the Menti code. That's 63431213. All right. So let's proceed. Ito po ang inyong mga kasagutan. The first question is, nakarehistro ka na ba para sa darating na eleksyon. Tingnan po natin ang pulso ng ating mga viewers. As of right now, mas marami po ang yes at sumusunod nga po ang no. Ayan, para sa mga nag-no, meron pa po tayong uh, nalalabing panahon bago matapos ang deadline ng registration. Habol na po tayo para po maka pag pa, makaboto tayo sa 2022. Alright. Sige po, tuloy-tuloy lang po kayo sa pagsagot dyan dahil tuloy-tuloy naman yung ating Mentimeter. Ang ating next question naman, ito po. Anong basihan ninyo sa pagpili ng isang kandidat? Para po sa katanungan ito, ay pwede kayo mag-input ng tatlong words. Okay, tatlong mga salita para sa ating word cloud. Nakikita niyo po yun ngayon. You will see the words will increase in size in proportion to the number of people who have answered the same. Okay, so we will leave the Mentimeter poll open for all of you as we go along with the program. we reveal natin later ang inyong mga kasagutan with our speakers. And as we are hearing from our speakers, let us now hear the word on the street. Okay, so marami tayong mga mapapakinggan na mga perspectives ngayong umaga with the person on the street interview with TVUP. Let's watch this. Ang basihan ko po sa pagpili ng isang kandidato bukod sa platforma nila ay ang credentials nila kasi uh, nakabalog po dito ang naging public service nila at initiative sa mga nagdaang taon kung meron man. Dapat um, pro-people yung approach niya sa mga platforms or sa mga gagawin niyang policies ni hahain na programa sa bansa. Ang isa pa po na basihan ko sa pagpili ng isang kandidato is yung kanyang professional excellence and kung may moral compass siya. Ano po, hindi po nag, nagnanakaw yung nagsisinungaling. Talagang taos-pusong nagsiservisyo sa bayan. Hindi lang para sa sarili, hindi lang para sa pangalan, hindi lang para sa um, power. Pero um, nagsiservisyo siya kasi gusto niya at mahal niya yung ginagawa niya. Tsaka naiintindihan nila talaga yung mga pangangailangan ng mga tao. Tsaka yung mga pangangailangan ng mga uh, ng bansa. Um, magiging malinis at magiging tapat ang, ang darating na halalan kung tawag dito, mag tayo by their rules. If anything, this pandemic uh, revealed how broken our political system is and um, in order for our uh, country to recover, we need to elect politicians in the upcoming 22, 2022 elections that are capable of to do just that. Sa tarating na halalan, uh, aasahan pa rin natin na sa ilalim pa rin tayo ng pandemya. So, uh, maganda na magkaroon ng maayos, systematic at organized na plano para sa eleksyon. Yung pagiging malinis at tapat yung halalan, nakasalalay talaga sa mga sa, sa mga taong ano, um, yung mga in charge dun mismo sa halalan. Feeling ko nasa self-responsibility ko na uh, kilalanin kung sino yung mga kandidato at gamitin itong uh, gamitin yung my right to suffrage uh, to its maximum point po. 
bilang parte ng kabataan, dapat lang talaga mas maging critical tayo sa pagtingin, lalo na sa politika, lalo na sa um, sa paghalal na kung sino magbago mas serbisyo sa bayan. Kung puli matuloy ang election, dahil kinakailangan na natin ng bagong leader na talagang um, health-based approach and hindi militarized and hindi based on fear. So, tingin ko, um, nasa 5 over 10 siya kung mahigyo malinis pa itong halalan na, med- na darating mo. I'm really hoping that the candidates that they're chosen are, you know, these are good good people and honest people. They would be um, leaders who are willing to introduce positive change for the country. All right, so there you have it po. Nakita po natin ang tugon ng ating mga kabataan. Okay, so sinabi nila na kailangan maging critical ng ating mga kabataan. At syempre lahat ng sektor sa pagpili ng ating mga bagong leader na mahalal sa taong 2022. Ilang buwan na lang po yan at ilang araw na lang din po ang nalalabi bago po matapos ang registration. Kaya po habol na po tayo para sa mga hindi pa po registrado. Once again, thank you very much TVUP for collating the voices of the youth and relaying it here in this forum. Tayong mga kabataan ang magmamana ng kinabukasan, kaya mahalagang marinig ang boses and actively ma-involve tayo sa darating na halalan. Lalo ngayon na kinakaharap natin na ko itong pandemya and so much of our time has been stalled because of this. At para naman, mas maging mayaman ang ating talakayan. Ating ipapakilala ang President of the Philippine Sociological Society, and also a faculty member at the University of Santo Tomas. Please welcome Dr. Louis Benedict R. Ignacio. Good morning po, Dr. Ignacio. Hi, good morning, Jules. Magandang umaga sa iyo at sa lahat ng mga kasama natin sa forum na ito. Good morning, sir. We are scrambling to convince every youth to register for the upcoming elections and everybody seems to be banking on the youth vote. What are the implications po ba in assuming that there is a unified Youth vote, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, for one, mahirap i-assume na may unified uh, youth vote. But uh, I think the reason why we are banking so much on uh, that part of the population is the sheer number. That's for one. Sobrang dami. Nabanggit mo nga kanina na kung titignan natin yung cluster ng youth uh, sa, sa population natin, that's almost 40 million, more or less 40 million. At uh, dun lang sa 18 to 19 years old, yung mga first-time voters, um, 10 million ang nasa population. Pero ang registered voters uh, doon sa, sa cluster na yun ay wala pa halos sa 3 million, wala pa sa kalahate ng uh, 10 million na yun. So una, talagang napakalaki ng populasyon ng ating youth vote. Pangalawa, um, dahil sa, well, experience or maybe the lack of it, um, yung iba sa mga kabataan ay naghahanap ng uh, impormasyon, ng gabay, kung paano sila matutulungan na bumoto ng tama para sa eleksyon na ito. Okay, sir. Thank you so much no, uh, for that point. Uh, once again, uh, Sir Ignacio, Dr. Ignacio is from the Philippine Sociological Society. And you know what? It's really always interesting na makita yung lens ng isang sociologist. I remember way back in undergrad, iba talaga yung nabibigay ng sociology classes para mas maunawaan yung role ng mga institution sa mga nangyari sa lipunan natin. Because societal factors can't be discounted, discounted when we talk about the... Uh, participation of the youth sector in our democratic function. So this makes a good jumping point, sir, for your formal presentation. So please, sir, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Jules. Um, okay, so I'm uh, starting off with um, the theme of the conference, you know, na the forum, that this is a communications and the democracy forum. And I like na uh, we are putting these two together. But uh, uh, in this particular aspect, in this particular um, uh, context, uh, we are focusing on the youth, uh, the youth vote. Uh, and um, in this discussion, ang gusto ko sanang pagtuunan ng pansin is 
uh, the concept of political maturity. Gaano ba ka mature ang ating uh, young voters to uh, and in relation to the question of Jules to really bank on uh, the youth vote. Uh, I'd like to uh, start off with um, the idea of democracy. Um, ang Pilipinas ay isang proud na bansa. We are so proud of our democracy and our democratic uh, form of government. First Republic in Asia, ang uh, mapayapang people power revolution na nag-reinstate uh, ng demokrasya sa Pilipinas. We are so proud of it. Although, um, uh, a general assumption of the definition of democracy is that we are allowed to vote. We are the ones, the majority, the plurality of the people are the ones who elect and who vote for uh, uh, the, the candidates. Yun yung general notion natin ng demokrasya. Although tama yun, tama yun, na ganon ang demokrasya, that's how it works. But democracy, for it to be quality democracy, depend on other principles as well. So other than free, fair, regular conduct of elections, a democracy for it to flourish as a democracy should also be um, following a certain rule of law. We should be subscribing to the constitution that no one is above the law, that we have a, a working constitution that primarily protects human rights. That's the second one. Another uh, principle of, of a good quality democracy is a free opposition. Um, hindi, uh, hindi sapat na uh, napapalitan yung mga uh, leaders sa gobyerno, yung kanilang um, accountability ay napapatunayan sa pamamagitan ng eleksyon. Dapat sa proseso ng pag, uh, uh, pag uh, go govern na ng bansa ay bukas din sila sa kritisismo, hindi lang sa opposition mismo, kung hindi sa lahat ng sektor ng lipunan. Uh, yun yung pangatlo, a free opposition. Uh, pang-apat ay ang ekonomiya. Dapat ang ekonomiya, uh, although marami ang, uh, ang, ang kumekwestyon sa sistema ng ekonomiya, ng kapitalismo, uh, ng paghahari ng kapitalista sa, sa Pilipinas, lalong-lalo na, uh, ngunit ang gusto natin sabihin dito, ang ekonomiya ay dapat malaya. Malaya sa kontrol ng ilan, malaya sa kontrol ng gobyerno. Dahil kung mayroon tayong malayang ekonomiya, yung ekonomiya ay nagbibigay ng alternatibong uh, uh, pagkukunan ng mga serbisyo, ng, uh, ng mga produkto, at hindi tayo nakatuon at uh, naka, nakadepende sa, sa gobyerno na kung kokontrolin nila ang paglabas ng mga produkto, kung kokontrolin nila ang presyo ng mga, mga bilihin at serbisyo, wala tayong magagawa. Yun yung pang-apat. At panglima at yun yung gusto kong pagtuunan ng pansin ngayong umaga, ay informed citizenry. Okay? Informed citizens. Kahit na malaya ang ekonomiya, mayroon kang uh, batas na sinusunod, uh, regular ang, ang, ang eleksyon. Kung ang mamamayan, lalong-lalo na sa konteksto ngayon ang kabataan ay hindi maalam sa kung ano ang nangyayari sa lipunan, hindi rin sila uh, makakapag uh, makakalahok. Okay? They will not be able to participate in a quality manner to the discourse, to societal events, okay? to political uh, events such as the election. Kaya napakahalaga ng koneksyon ng communication, media, and democracy. So we see the value of media and, and, and the youth's access to, to media. Uh, but as we are all immersed and aware to what is happening right now, the access to media may have two sides, okay? both good and bad. Good, of course, because we have now more platforms to look into and acquire um, real, genuine information. Uh, so, mas nakikita natin na yung, uh, yung lipunan, kabataan, lalo, lalo na, ay mas uh, mataas yung antas ng kaalaman tungkol sa mga nangyayari sa lipunan. So, properly and adequately informed uh, citizenry is a 
a consequence of access to media. Um, on the other hand, we have to uh, accept the fact that there are so many, okay, so many platforms as well, uh, wherein the contents are questionable. Okay? So fake news, troll farms, uh, bukod pa doon sa realidad na um, hindi lahat tayo ay may pantay-pantay na, na access sa information. So um, itong dalawang parte na ito na, na uh, dulot ng access to media ay patuloy na nag, naglalaban ano, para uh, sa kalalagayan ng kabataan. Um, the goal now is to make sure that the young people, the, especially the, the first-time voters, the, the first-time registrants, to have access to information to be adequately and 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 uh, properly informed and be critical enough to pick out which is true and which is fake to critically enrich the discourse and uh, especially if it is with a troll or um, um, yung talagang sinasadya na manggulo sa diskusyon, sa, sa discourse. So it, we, we, have to, we have to be critically uh, aware of uh, uh, the, the kind of information and the, co co the kind of discourse that we are getting into. Um, the question is, how do we do it? How do we make sure that our, our young people are uh, informed with quality uh, uh, information, ano, major redundant yun. So the question is who and how should we keep the, the, the youth informed? Uh, Jules mentioned about institutions uh, a while ago. So two things, structures and institutions. When we say structures, these are patterns. Okay? These are patterns of how we do things. These are patterns of how we view things. Um, and as the young people are immersed to many sources of data, they themselves build a pattern for themselves as, a, as an individual and as a collective. So makikita natin sa maraming pag-aaral kung ano at saan nanggagaling ang impormasyon uh, ng mga kabataan. At uh, yun, yung pattern na yun ay kinakailangang ma makita ng mga nasa gobyerno, nasa institusyon para uh, maging, mas, mas maging malawak at mas maging epektibo yung gagawin ng mga institusyon na ito. Um, kung ang sinasabi ng pattern ay nakukuha ng mga kabataan ng impormasyon nila sa social media, sa iba't ibang platforms sa social media, kahit Facebook man yan, TikTok man yan, or Instagram man yan. Ngayon, ang mga institusyon ay dapat tinitignan kung paano nila iyon magagamit para mapanatiling may alam ang kabataan. Uh, when we say institutions, these are groups, these are organizations, these are, these are um, structures as well that provide the basic needs of human beings. So uh, schools providing education as a basic need, the church, uh, religious organizations provide, providing faith, family and community. Okay, providing shelter, safety, food, clothing to uh, the young people, and especially the government. Uh, providing what we need, providing protection. Now, all of these institutions have a role to play in making sure that the youth are informed and very significant roles at that. Schools, educational institutions, um, ang kinakailangan ay, ay mapanatili nila kung ano talaga yung goal ng educational institution. And that is to hone critical thinking, okay? to hone the critical mind among our students. The church, okay, um, Katulad ng nasabi ni Dr. Saez kanina, it's faith, it's pure heart, clear heart, critical mind, and clear heart. The, the church, the religious institutions that our young people are part of should also have uh, that goal in mind. That together with cleansing the heart is making them informed that 
their decision will depend on on critical mind and clear heart the family yung diskusyonan sa harap ng 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 hapagkainan yung uh, pagbibigay impormasyon yung maliliit na debate sa pamilya uh, kinakailangan ay mapanatili natin itong uh, 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 tama ang uh, impormasyon or mapanatili natin na tama yung impormasyon na pinag-uusapan dito at uh, may pinakamalaking uh, uh, role i think ay uh, ang ang gobyerno lalong-lalo na ang COMELEC, lalong lalo na ang ang siguro ang National Youth uh, Commission uh, dahil sila ang ang um, ang direktang uh, ahensya na uh, tumutugon sa sa kabataan napakalaki ng responsibilidad nila na panatiliing uh, may alam ang kabataan sa ngayon hindi na sapat yung tatawagin mo lang sila para mag-register eh. hindi hindi na sap, hindi na sapat yung sisiguraduhin mo na sa 10 milyon na posibleng first time voters ay makukuha mo ang majority sa 10 milyon ng boboto hindi sapat na boboto sila dapat ay boboto sila ng tama dapat ay boboto sila ng may alam dapat ay boboto sila na at, at, at iboboto nila yung taong sa tingin nila ay karapat dapat dun sa posisyon na yon. Ang goal na itong lahat ng institutions na ito ay masiguradong ang kabataan ay may political maturity. And this is my, my last point. When we say political maturity, this is a bundle of moral, cognitive, emotional capacity eh, the individual's necessary attribute for participatory democracy. Again, ang demokrasya ay hindi lang sa pagboto. Ang demokrasya ay hindi lang uh, nakalaan o nakadepende sa kakayanan nating bumoto uh, ng regular o mapalitan yung mga nakaupo sa, sa gobyerno. Ang demokrasya ay nakasalalay sa pagpaparticipate, okay, sa pagpakikilahok ng lahat ng miyembro ng lipunan. Masisigurado natin na tayo ay tama at lubusang nakikilahok kung tayo ay nasa isang level of political maturity. Paano ba natin masasabi na tayo ay politically mature? Pwede natin tignan yung engagement, active engagement ng, ng ating sarili, ng kabataan, yung political efficacy. By political efficacy, and yung yung consistent or constrained attitudes yun yung uh, pagiging uh, consistent natin sa lahat ng uh, aspeto ng lipunan kung sa kung sa ekonomiya halimbawa uh, naniniwala ka na dapat ay patawan ng mataas na buwis ang mga uh, mayayamang korporasyon at mayayamang individual para magkaroon ng mas malawak at mas malaking pondo ang gobyerno para sa serbisyo sa lipunan at kasabay nun ay naniniwala ka na ang isang nagtatabaho, ang isang empleyado, ang isang regular na mamamayan ay may responsibilidad din na magbayad ng buwis bilang kontribusyon para sa lipunan, then you're being consistent. Right? You're being efficient with your uh, uh, ideolo ideological uh, stance, ideological stance or political economic beliefs. O pwede din natin masabi na ang isang tao ay politically mature kung paano niya nare-relate yung mga ideologies na ito doon sa preference niya ng, ng iboboto. Hindi, hindi ka po pwedeng uh, relihiyoso at sumusuporta ka sa isang tao na, um, na, na harap-harapan ay uh, kumikwestiyon sa dignidad ng tao okay, bilang isang tao. Uh, hindi mo po pwedeng paghiwalayin yung uh, personalidad ng isang uh, politiko bilang isang ng yung personalidad ng isang tao bilang isang politiko at isang relihiyoso hindi mo siya po pwedeng paghiwalayin hindi ka po pwedeng sasabihin mo ay ikaw ay uh, pro life ikaw ay pro poor pero yung uh, decision mo sa kung sino ang iboboto mo ay hindi uh, inire-reflect ang ganong ideology so makikita natin ay may na, na may disparity so masasabi natin na hindi pa siya fully nagmamature Ngayon, bilang pagtatapos, ang goal, ang intensyon, ang hangarin 
ng mga voters education, voters forum tulad ng uh, ng uh, uh, voters forum or uh, election forum na ito ay mapasik mapanitili masigurado na una ang lahat ng sektor lalong-lalo na ang kabataan ay may alam. Pangalawa na ang alam nila ay tama. Pangatlo na gamit ang tamang kaalaman ay boboto sila ng tama. Allow me to end by giving some advice. When you vote, think and keep in mind the word tama. T for track record, A for advocacy, M for morality, and A, I think the more important one, is alay sa bayan. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig at sana ay maging maayos at makabuluhan ng ating elections 2022. Salamat. Right. Thank you, thank you po, Dr. Louis Benedict Ignacio. Ang ganda po ng inyong uh, talk. Um, firstly, you captured that democracy no, is a work in progress na hindi siya natatapos lamang sa pagpaparehistro, hindi lang din siya natatapos sa pagboto. Tuloy-tuloy siya kung it's a cycle. Kumbaga, every three years, kung election yung, yung pinaka-timeline natin, within uh, the duration of those three years, tuloy-tuloy yung pakikipag-engage natin sa iba't ibang mga sector. Thank you for that. At maganda yung acronym na TAMA. Okay, tatandaan natin yan. Ha? Okay, so T for track record, A for advocacy, M for... This is morality, sir, no? Tama yes, ba? yes, morality. Very important yan. And A, alay sa bayan. Hindi alay para sa kanilang syudad lang, hindi alay para sa kanilang angkan lang, dapat para sa bayan. Alright? Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Ignacio. For thank you, Jules. Thank you. On how we should appreciate the youth in this upcoming election. You know, sometimes the youth have been trolled and branded as walang alam, marami pang kakainin di gas, and somehow they have been managed to rebrand and turn woke. Okay? as an insult sa ating mga kabataan. And it's very difficult to face this, lalo na confined tayo sa social media platforms. Pero, syempre, I know that the youth will not let this be a hindrance para marinig ang boses natin. Wala namang mali kapag ikaw ay sinabihang woke. Ang ibig sabihin lamang niyan ay mulat ka na sa katotohanan. At sabi nga nila, kapag mulat ka na, kasalanan na ang pumikit. Okay. At ngayon naman, dumako na tayo sa perspektibo ng filosofiya. Okay, let's welcome the President of the Philosophical Association of the Philippines, or PAP, and a professor at the De La Salle University, Manila. Please welcome Dr. Jeremiah Hoven Huwak. Isang maalab po na umaga, Dr. JJ Joaquin. Isang maulan na umaga sa iyo, Jules. Hello. Yes, I understand po that you have just recently finished the ethic comics projects. Can you tell us more about this, sir? And maybe also touch on how we can harness comics and engaging the youth in civic and political participation. Yeah, thanks, Jules. So, ethic comics project is a project that I have done with the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia. So, basically, comics siya na nagtuturo ng ethics sa mga students ng ethics sa general education program ng CHED. Ngayon, yung ganitong klase pag-iisip sa ethics, yung consequentialist ka ba, the ontologist ka ba, virtue ethicist ka ba, makakatulong yan sa pag-iisip, not only dun sa mga dapat gawin, pero paano bumoto as well. Papakita ko yung kamay. Alright, and very interesting. Sana ma kung may soft copy and now we could also download and share on our social media or we could we could download or buy it as well makakatulong yan para mas maka ma-reach natin sinasabi kanina ni sir yung political maturity so sir go ahead pa with your presentation thanks Jules now ang aking gagawin dito sa aking maikling presentation ay pag-isipan ko ano nga ba ang pilosopiya ng pagboto in particular, I'm concerned about the whys and the hows of voting. Now, ito lang yung aking outline. So, isa-set up ko muna yung problem o yung question sa ating pag-usapan. Tapos pag-usapan ko kung bakit nga ba tayo dapat mag-voto. Bigay ako ng tatlong argumento na binigay ng mga pilosopo tungkol dito. Tapos, papakita ko how we actually vote. Some observations from political science, from psychology of voting, from sociology of voting as well. Tapos, magbibigay ako ng isang argumento, paano tayo dapat bumoto? So, let's set up the questions. Now, 
be aware that we are in a representative democratic government. Itong gobyerno ng Pilipinas ay isang representanting gobyerno na demokratikong inahalal. That's why we all have the right and privilege to vote for the people who will represent us and will ensure that basic rights are upheld. So ngayon, ang tanong, bakit nga ba kailangan tayong bumoto? This is especially for you guys, na mga bata pa, na paguhan sa pagboto, kailangan nyo malaman bakit nga ba tayo bumoto o bumoto. And kailangan nyo rin alam kung bakit or paano dapat bumoto. Ngayon, hindi ako procedural, hindi, ako, hindi ko alam kung ano yung prinsipyo ng COMELEC, pero eh, yung dapat dito, yung should, is an ethical or normative claim kung paano ka dapat bumoto. So magbibigyan ako ng tatlong argumento kung bakit kailangan bumoto. And these are arguments na pinakita na ng mga pilosopo since time immemorial. So one argument is the argument from a citizen's duty. So we are citizens of the state. So nasa isang lipunan tayo na may gobyerno. At ang ating gobyerno or estado ay isang demokratiko at representanteng estado. Being citizens of this kind of state, we have certain rights and duties. Among these duties is the duty to vote. It's actually not just a right, but a duty. Obligasyon po natin na bumoto. Sabi nga doon sa Konstitusyon ng Pilipinas, may penalty po pag hindi kayo bumoboto. Eh. So thus, it is our duty, obligasyon natin, na bumoto. So therefore, we ought to vote. So itong lang, Ganitong klaseng argumento ay binibigay ng mga tinatawag na deontologist or yung duty-based ang pag-iisip about how we should act. Now, another argument na pinipresent bakit kailangan bumoto ay yung tinatawag na maximization of welfare. And ano ba yung sabihin ng welfare? Ang welfare dito yung kapakanan mo as a citizen. Now, each citizen is concerned with the promotion of his or her own welfare. Kapakanan mo. Yun yung gusto mong malaman. Yun yung gusto mong i-flourish. Now, in a representative democracy, the task of security, securing all the citizens' welfare is bestowed upon a duly elected government. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang ikaw ang nasa mundo, kundi kasama mo yung mga ibang tao. At nandiyan ang gobyerno para pangalagaan ang lahat ng kapakanan natin. Now, to maximize each of our individual welfares, we ought to vote for people who will secure our welfare. That's why we need to vote. We ought to vote. Now, yung ganitong klase yung pag-iisip about voting or yung tahilan natin para bumoto ay tinatawag na utility-based argument or welfare-based argument. Ang iniisip mo dyan, ang rason mo bakit ka bumoboto ay para utilize or maximize yung welfare mo. Now, another argument that we need to mga philosopho, and I think this one is a more moral argument, is that it's the argument from ensuring justice. Well, we seek justice and fairness in all aspects of our life. In a representative democracy, the task of ensuring justice and fairness is bestowed upon a truly elected government. So to ensure that justice and fairness are achieved for everyone, hindi lang sa'yo, hindi lang sa kamag-anak mo, kundi para sa lahat, ay we must vote for people who will ensure them for us. That's why we are in a representative democracy. Hence, we ought to vote. Ngayon, yung tatlong argumento na to, ay again, binibigay ng mga pilosopo. So yung isang argumento ay yung argumento from duty. Ikaw ay citizen, may duty ka to vote. Yung pangalawang argumento, meron kang mga kapakanan na gusto mong i-flourish. So yung gobyerno na ihahalal mo, ay kailangan i-ensure na nandyan yung mga yan, yung kapakanan mo. And finally, justice. Bakit ka kailangan mo mo ito? Kasi gusto mong may hustisya at may fairness sa ating ibigay. Ngayon, paano ba tayo bumuboto? How do we actually vote? Now, here are some observations lang naman. So, we have the notion uh, in our country that people win elections through popular vote. Now, this notion is a general notion about democratic processes. That is, people win elections if they get the highest number of votes. Yun yung popular vote. Unfortunately, dito sa Pinas, yung popular vote is often confused with popularity vote. 
that is bumuboto tayo or mga nauna sa atin ay bumuboto sa mga taong tingin nila ay sikat. Hindi dahil sa popular vote yun, kundi dahil popular sila in a sense na uh, sikat sila. So, nandiyan yung mga artista, nandiyan yung mga uh, boxingero, basketballista, and so and, and so forth. Kasi sila yung sikat, kaya sila yung naboboto. Thus, our elections here in the country is more of a popularity contest rather than a rational exercise, a rational democratic exercise. That's the sad part. Another sad part of this kind of voting system ay, ay yung tinatawag ng mga political scientists na systems of voting. Okay? Political scientists have rightly predicted past election turnouts. So, paano nila ginawa yun? Well, they have identified certain thinking heuristics that most of us use in voting. And tinawag ko itong mga systems or heuristics kasi ito yung hindi na kailangan mag-isip eh. Para siyang automatic na pagbaluarte. Kung taga somewhere ako, ang boboto ko, yung taga doon. Yun yung baluarte system na pag-isip. Kamag-anak system, bumuboto ako kasi kamag-anak ko yan. Or kasi kaibigan niya ng kamag-anak ko eh. Or and so on and so forth. So, masyadong personalized yung ating pagpunto. Meron din tayo yung kinatawag na kaanib system. Now, this one is a kind of thinking or heuristic that people use na uh, hindi niya hinahanap yung yung balwate o mag-anak pero kasi kasapi siya sa isang komunidad, religious man yan or political man yan, ideological or pangkat. So, bumuboto ka dahil kaanib ka. Pinuboto mo itong taan to dahil kaanib siya eh. Kabarilan, kabargada, and so on. And finally, may tinatawag din na kakilala system. Kakilala ko kasi yan. Ay, close kami. Kaya siya yung binoto ko. So yung mga ganitong klaseng systems of thinking o yung mga heuristics, thinking heuristics, ay ginagamit ng mga political scientists to identify, oh, sino kaya ang mananalo dito sa lugar na to? Ah, kasi, ito, baluwati ni ganito yan. Or kamag-anak to eh. And so on and so forth. Now in short, yung ganitong klaseng pag-iisip, or system of voting, ay tatawag kaya natin katribo way of thinking. And most of us, sadly, vote this way. Now, I've shown you how we actually vote, some observations of how people actually vote. So how we should vote. Yan naman ang ating tatanong na yan. Now, it's a cliche na sabihin na we should vote wisely. Ang nagiging ang joke nga eh, si Wisely na lang iboto natin, huwag na si whoever. Akala natin tao si Wisely. Pero, cliche as it may be, we should vote wisely. But well, how, how should we do it? Yan yung ating tanong. Well, sa akin, mayroon tali- tayong tatlong pwedeng itanong bago tayo bumoto. So, in choosing who to vote for, perhaps you could ask yourself, or you should ask yourself, dahil nasa isang representanteng gobyerno na tayo, will this person truly represent me? Okay? Because they will represent us. Ikaw, ako, yung mga kamag-anak mo, yung teachers mo. Kung sino man manalo sa gobyerno, siya ang magre-represent sa atin. Ngayon, itong tao bang ibuboto ko ay magre-represent talaga sa akin or sa atin. Or another way of putting it is, will this person secure the country's welfare, kapahanan nating lahat, or will this person ensure justice and fairness for everyone? Now, these questions, kung ang sagot mo dyan ay yes, then by all means, vote for that person. But, if your answer to at least one of these questions is no, then take a step back and reflect. Perhaps there is a better person who can have your vote. Now, you might ask, para saan ba itong ganitong kasing pag-iisip? Well, ito yung project na ginagawa ng PAP, uh, ng, ng iba pang mga organisasyon, na tinatawag na isip boto. Pag-isipan mo muna yung boto mo bago ka boto. Huwag ka lang basta-basta nag-iisip dahil parang palawate mo yan, katribo mo yan, kakilala, and so on. Ngayon, pwede nyo isipin, but does my vote even matter? Does one vote count? Well, perhaps here, here's your intuition. I'm just one vote. I'm a lonely, uh, card-carrying voter. And my vote doesn't matter, matter in the general scheme of things. 
Sipin niya, di ba? Kung karamihan boboto kay person X, ikaw boboto kay person Y, eh, isa ka lang. So, paano? Paano yun? Paano ka mananalo? Ngayon yung ganyang klaseng pag-iisip, I think, may imply the following. Either, no one will go out to vote, kasi nga, parang, kung ganyan tayo lahat mag-iisip, eh, parang, wala na. Wala nang boboto, kasi parang, wala namang kwenta eh. Or else, people will just vote for the winnable candidate. Yung pwedeng manalo. So bakit ko isusugal yung boto ko kung patatalo rin naman yung kandidato? But if no one will go out to vote, then our electoral process fails. Diba, Sir James Jimenez? Or if people will just vote for the winnable candidate, yung ganitong klaseng, oh, dito lang ako tataya kasi siya naman yung mananalo, then the whole electoral process won't reflect the actual voice of the people. And that is what representative democracy is all about. But in either case, our representative democracy fails. Surely, our, demo our representative democracy is not a total failure, so we can't let it fail. So our questions again, why should you vote and how should you vote? At least the answers to these questions I leave to you. Salamat. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. JJ. Yung pinaka-main takeaway ko dun sa talk niyo, sir, ito yung why vote, yung three things na nabanggit ninyo. And sinalin ko na rin sa Filipino. So number one, tungkulin natin bilang mga Pilipino, syempre, na bumoto. Pangalawa, uh, ito yung tumutugon sa kapakanan natin bilang mga Pilipino, di ba? Na dapat yung mga desisyon natin eh, naka-angkla siya doon sa kapakanan, kapakanan natin. At pangatlo, para matiyak na merong katarungan at pagkapantay-pantay sa ating lipunan. So yung mga ilang uh, bagay na kailangan natin uh, tandaan kung bakit tayo kailangan bumoto uh, every three years. Thank you so much once again, Dr. J JJ, for that talk. Definitely, we have the energy, the time, and the wit to contribute in making our country better or even to be the best for as long as we band together and actively stay involved. Kaya po natin syempre i-push ito. At para magawa natin yon, we really have to go out of our comfort zones and make sure that no one is left behind. Nako, yan yung very important na kataga ngayong uh, pandemya nung dapat walang napag-iiwanan. At para po bigyan tayo ng overview kung gaano kahalaga ang boto ng kabataan sa darating na eleksyon, Narito po ang spokesperson at nagsisilbing direktor ng Education and Information Department ng Comelec. Kasama po natin, Director James Jimenez. Sir James, kamusta po? Magandang umaga. Sir James, uh, good morning. Yes, yes, good morning. Alright, maraming maraming salamat po at pinaulakan po ninyo ang aming imbinasyon. Before you begin your formal presentation, may I ask la po kung ano na ang status ng registration for the first-time voters? Kamusta po ba? Out of the 4 million first-time voters, ilan na po yung nagpa nagparehistro? Well, out of the 4 million first-time voters na, na gusto nating makita sana magparehistro, eh tayo yung nakakapagtala na ng mahigit 5 million. No, no? So lampas na tayo dun sa target na yun. In fact, uh, ang original na, na target natin is 59 million voters by Mar by May 2022. Sa ngayon, tayo ay nasa 61 million na and uh, it looks like we're on track to actually um, up to 61.8 million perhaps no, by May 2022. So uh, things are going great. Okay. Sir, uh, very quickly lang, sir, no? kasi uh, every three years, lagi natin ginagawa to, especially ng, ng Comelec. Sa so, tingin nyo po for this upcoming elections, bakit kaya may mangilan-ngilan pa? Actually, marami pa rin yung hindi nakapagpaparehistro hanggang ngayon. Ma hindi naman kasi hindi naman kasi reasonable expectation yung lahat ng pwedeng magparehistro ay magpaparehistro. Because you have to also take into consideration na meron talagang taong ayaw magparehistro. I mean, I know you know some people in your circle na kahit anong kahit anong socialize mo sa kanila ay hindi sila magpaparehistro. So we we do have to expect that. On the other hand, meron din naman mga tao na ang pagpaparehistro ay hindi hindi matter of national pride or hindi matter of civic responsibility kundi commodity, no? And and for some of these people, uh they have to wait until the last minute kasi sa last minute yung bidding war, no? sa last minute yung ano eh yung yung bigayan eh and and we've seen that from uh you know from uh, from a very long time ago hanggang ngayon that that people really do come late with the expectation 
that they will be offered some sort of recompense for voter registration. So uh, these are just two of the elements that we have to take into consideration when we talk about yung mga taong hindi pa nagpaparehistro. All right, Sir James, mong magiging malalim po at makabuluhan ng inyong presentation. So, Sir, please go ahead po. Maraming salamat. I'd like to share a screen. All right. Uh, mabilis lang to, no? Mabilis lang to. Ang, ang gusto kong tutukan dito, dahil nga ang title natin ay Bata-Bata, Mulat ka na ba, no? Gusto ko tutukan yung, uh, yung kapangyarihan ng kabataan sa darating na halalan. So... Based on the figures that we have uh, to this to date, no, nakikita natin. Uh, I, well, I, I talked about most of these things. Uh, obviously, the highest contested position in the coming elections is president. Kaya napakahalaga. Uh, yung presinto natin, we're looking at 110,000, possibly up to 115,000. Pero 800 voters lang per precinct. So, medyo maraming presinto pero mas kunting tao bawat presinto. But that's not really the main point of this presentation. This is the main point, no? the youth vote. Now, uh, ayon sa demographics na hawak natin, ang, ang, ang pinakamalaking voting block ngayon ay yung 41 to 59-year-old pa rin. No? 41 to 59 years old. Pero yung kabataan kasi natin, medyo nakasegment tayo. From 18 to 21, 22 to 33, 34 to 40. No? Pero may mga depensyon ng kabataan na naglalagay sa age range ng kabataan from 18 to 35. Kung yan ang titignan nating demographic, ang mangyayari niyan, yung 18 to 35 uh, block, uh, 18 to 40 block actually accounts for 52% of the voting population. So, malaki. Yan ang pinakamalaki, far and away, pinakamalaking uh, voting block sa darating na halalan. Just as a reminder, nung 2016, nakapag, nakapag-install tayo ng presidente on the strength of 16.6 million votes alone. And to, yung 12th senator natin nung nakaraang halalan ay nanalo base sa 14.5 million votes lamang. And yet, in 2019, 22 million ang kabataang bumoto. 22 million. So yung 16 at saka 14 million, kakalog-kalog yan sa loob ng 22 million. And kitang-kita natin dito, based on these numbers alone, that if the youth can get its act together, it can become a very significant voting block. No? Basically, the youth will be able to dictate much of the outcome of the elections as well as the shape of government to come. Why is it important na ang kabataan ay lumahok sa halalan? Palagi sinasabi natin, uh, well, you know, kayo ang pag-asa ng bayan, etc., etc., but what does that mean in practical terms? Well, it's this. Number one, if you have a lot of young voters, you practically ensure the election of young leaders. Okay? Why is young leaders very important? Young lead the youth of, of leadership of the country reflects also the outlook of leadership. Diba? Kung meron kang leadership na medyo weighted towards older people, you can expect na yung government na yun hindi magiging masyadong responsive sa needs ng kabataan. Hindi rin siya magiging bukas sa mga bagabagong pag-iisip. Kaya nga, kapag marami kang youth participants in the electoral system, nakikita natin na nag infuse sila ng bagong ideas sa diskusyon natin. Marami tayong napag-uusapang mga bagong issue, mga bagong konsepto na dati medyo ini-ignore. No? In fact, Nakikita natin ngayon yan, questions of, of uh, gender equality. Halimbawa, that is a largely youth-driven movement. No? It started out as a youth-driven movement. It continues to be powered by a lot of the youth who are now really, let's be honest, uh, sort of having difficulty seeing things in a different way, in a way that would probably be more familiar to older generations. Yung, yung, yung ang lalaki, lalaki, ang babae, babae. But, but because of the influx of, of new ideas into the public discussion, umuusad tayo as a society. Pangatlo, kapag marami tayong youth participants in elections, dadami ang youth leaders natin, ang young leaders natin, we will enable the passage of more youth-centric laws. Laws that are designed really to give a hand up 
to the youth who are trying to to make their way into into ano into the future you know in our society ang problema kasi sa karamihan ng batas natin medyo hindi niya na hindi niya really hindi niya talagang pinagtutuunan ng pansin yung mga specificong hamon na kinaharap ng mga kabataan so we need more youth centric laws and we can do that if we have more youth voters and finally and i think this is the most important thing when you have more youth participants in elections you create a foundational generation of principled voters palagi nating sinasabi kailangan magkaroon ng reforma sa mga sa mga butante kailangan magbago ang butante pero kung iisipin mo yan ng masinsinan makikita mo na if all you can do is try to teach people who already have a mindset yung sinasabi nga kanina ni ni doc no na mga yung mga yung mga naka in na sa sa pag-iisip na katribo medyo mahihirapan ka na magkaroon ng long lasting change kasi maturuan mo man sila ngayon for one hour for two hours hindi ka sure na magte-take yung leksyon hindi ka ma sure na mag na magbabago yung pananaw right whereas if you were to approach voter reform as a generational kind of thing then you see that if you were to replace the older generation with a new generation that believes differently that acts differently that 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 perhaps acts in a more principled manner then you see a sea change in the quality of voting that you see right nakita nyo kanina yung ating ano no yung ating demographics ang pinakamalaking block ngayon ay yung 41 yung 41 to 60 that will change voters will age out kung yung voters na na 41 to 60 na may mga dala ng lumang ideya lumang pag-iisip at lumang pananaw if they when they age out they will be replaced by young voters who believe differently who probably believe in in things closer to what you believe in right and so you you create that generation of principled voters na talagang pinaglalaban nating ma-create and that's why it's very important that youth participation be encouraged and be fostered uh, in our population now let's talk about the coming elections more specifically no Again, I said the highest ranking position to be contested will be position of president. That's 325 positions: president, vice president, senator, district rep, and party list. 325 national positions, and more than 17,000 local positions for a total of close to 18,000. If dug dug mo pa yung sa barn, then it pushes you over the edge. Lampas ka na ng 18,000 positions to be voted for. Pagdating ng 2022, ganyang kalaki ang halalang hinaharap natin. But of course, yung halala na yan, eh, medyo magbabago ang itsura niyan. Okay? Um, a quick rundown of the, of the relevant dates. Patapos na yung voter registration, wala pong extension. Hanggang September 30, 2021 lang tayo. That will be followed immediately by the filing of COCs, October 1 to 8. October 1 to 8 ang filing po ng COC and then the election period with all of the bans will start January 9 until Gen- June 2, 2022. All right? The campaigns will start on February 8 for national positions and March 25 for local candidates. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng nakikita niyo'ng buga ngayon, lahat ng nakikita niyo'ng poster, lahat ng nakikita niyo'ng advertisement sa TV, sa internet, sa YouTube, lahat 'yan prima Sure campaigning po yan because the campaigns are officially going to start only next year. And then election day, of course, will happen on May 9, 2022. And yes, it will still be automated. And yes, it will still be in person. No, there will be no online voting. No, there will be no postal voting. Yes, we considered both of those solutions, except that in order to make those solutions uh, applicable to us, We would have needed a law to make it applicable, no? To make it, uh, to to authorize Comelec to conduct online voting and postal voting. We sounded the call for alternative means of voting as early as April 2021. Sorry, 2020, and 
wala. Walang nangyari. No? In fact, uh, yung sinasabi ng hybrid na mas matagal pa nilang pinananawagan, eh hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin nagagawa. So, automated elections pa rin tayo and in-person pa rin. Alright? Speaking of in-person elections, uh, let's talk about some changes in the elections. No? First of all, at the level of the voting center, there will be health screening in all voting centers nationwide. Hindi ka makakapasok sa voting center unless you go through health screening where you will be asked to submit a health declaration form. Kukunan ka ng temperatura. Kapag nakitang questionable ang, ang, ang iyong health status, you will be diverted to an isolation polling place. More on that later. When you get past the health screening, you will run up against a voter assistance desk. The voter assistance desk will be manned by representatives of um, accredited citizens' arms, right? It will not be manned by COMELEC personnel. It will be manned by citizens' arms. Anong magagawa mo sa voter assistance desk? Yung voter assistance desk, ang purpose talaga niyan e eh para iwasan yung pagkukumpul-kumpul ng mga tao sa may pintuan ng polling place. Pangkaraniwang practice natin, Pag darating na ng halalan, pupunta tayo sa polling place, doon tayo magkukumpul-kumpul sa labas ng mismong classroom at doon tayo titingin kung saan tayo boboto. Ngayon, gagawin na natin sa voter assistance desk, palalayuin natin from the polling from the actual polling place para hindi tayo magkukumpul-kumpul. You will also notice that there will be a lot of queues, maraming pila. This is because gusto nating iwasan, again, like I said, yung congregation in large numbers, no? Kaya kung nakapila tayo with marshals all over the place, then we will be able to control that better. Certainly, kapag ganun ang sitwasyon ng karamihan, magiging mas obvious kung magkakaroon ng kumpol-kumpol, it will make enforcement that much simpler. Now, the polling places will also undergo a radical change. No? Dati ang ating polling places, maliliit, masisikip, and for the most part, na, na, napapayagan natin at ini encourage natin 10 people voting at the same time right so polling places tend to be crowded um, 10 people voting at the same time right ngayon magbabago na yan number 1 magkakaroon tayo ng physical uh, changes dun sa layout ng kwarto to ensure good ventilation uh, in all cases and perhaps to use plastic barriers or acrylic barriers Second, there will be voting booths. Yung voting booth, uh, first time makikita ng mga first time voters yan. In fact, a lot of people who have who have uh, who, who began voting only post EDSA will probably not be familiar with the, with what a Philippine voting booth looks like, okay? except in pictures. We're gonna be using it for the first time since the early 80s. Uh, number three, there will be fewer people in the polling place, right? Dati, sabi ko, 10 voters voting at the same time. Right now, the most radical solution that we are entertaining cuts that number down to five people in the polling place. Notice that I said five people, not five voters, because I mean five people only, right? That's three members of the electoral board, yung iting tatlong teacher, yung botante, at saka isang watcher. Now, I understand that's going to be really difficult for a lot of people to, to accept. But again, like I said, this is where the COMELEX brain is at. This is what we're thinking right now. What we want to do is we want to reduce the number of people in the polling place, right? Again, the most extreme uh, possibility that we're entertaining is that we're going to have five people at uh, in the polling place. Now, I spoke earlier of isolation polling places. Isolation polling places are special uh, voting rooms where it's set up just like a polling place, except that the COVID protections there are, you know, at a maximum. Okay? Diyan natin pabobotohin yung mga taong suspected of having COVID. The reason for this is because Comelec believes as a matter of principle that having COVID is not disqualifying. Na pwede kang bumoto dapat kahit na ikaw ay may sakit. Now, incidentally, when you talk about isolation polling places, we are not really talking about full-blown COVID cases. We're talking about suspected COVID cases pa lang. Doon sa full-blown COVID cases, 
pinag uh, ginagawa pa namin yung procedure for them because these people will probably be in quarantine areas or in hospitals no so kailangan natin pag-usapan pa kung paano natin ma-operationalize yung pagboto ng mga taong yan again hindi naman sila required bumoto but if they if they manifest their desire to vote then Comelec should do something about it there will, as usual, be accessible polling places. Accessible polling places are those polling places that are designed to accommodate the needs of persons with disability, senior citizens, and so on. No, People who need special assistance. Okay, So we will have those as well. Now, in general, there will be local voting hours. We're looking at a 12-hour voting day. So hindi na tayo from 7 to 3 um, p.m., kundi mas malamang 6 to 6, right? Incidentally, napag-uusapan lately yung multiple voting days. Let me tell you now that this is a long shot. No? Malabong mangyari yan. We haven't ruled it out completely, but it is unlikely. Why? Three reasons. Number one, there is no law authorizing multiple day elections. Number two, having, having to pause the elections at the end of the day going to sleep at night and then starting it up again in the, the following day, this poses massive security risks. Okay, Massive security risks in the sense that you are going to have to secure more than 100,000 precincts overnight. Right? You're going to have to make sure that nothing happens to the ballots or the counting machines overnight um, while the elections are pending. This is enough to give us sleepless nights whenever we think about it. So it's highly unlikely that it will be acceptable to the general public. And finally, number three, we're talking about honoraria. Teachers are expected to serve for one day and they will be given honoraria to compensate them for that one day, one day service. Now, if they were made to serve two days or three days, then they will have to be compensated for those days as well, which means that whatever you're spending on 330,000 teachers, you're going to have to multiply by two or three if you have two or three voting days. And here's the rub, right? Here's the rub. Our budget was recently slashed by 64%, which means we have very little money to use. So saan natin kukunin yung pang honoraria para sa teachers, right? If we had more money, then baka may laban pa because marami tayong paghuhugutan. Pero kung ganyan na ang pera natin, bare bones budget na tayo, as it is, saan pa natin kukunin yung pang honoraria ng mga guro natin? That would be unfair to them. Right? Of course, minimum health protocols will be enforced. No face mask, no face shield. But let me emphasize, you will not be required to show a negative COVID test you will not be required to show proof of vaccination. This is, uh, these, two, these two things are some of the most, um, most common fake news items that have been circulating recently. Ulitin ko lang, hindi nyo kailangan ng, uh, hindi nyo kailangan ng, 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 ano, ng COVID test, no? ng, ng RT-PCR test. Hindi nyo kailangan ng vaccination card. Alright? Dagdag ko na hindi nyo rin kailangan ng national ID. Right? Hindi nyo kailangan ng national ID. Okay. Finally, a lot of people are always asking us, Comelec, handa na ba kayo to conduct safe elections? Ang sagot lang dyan, yes, kami, handa kami. But remember, elections happens in many different locations, right? It happens in the polling, in, it happens in the filing of the COCs, it happens uh, on election day. But it also happens on the streets kung saan nangangampanya ang mga politiko. It happens in the neighborhoods where people talk among themselves. Ultimately, ultimately, we believe that the COMELEC can secure the areas that is that are under its control. Walang problema dyan. We have been doing it. We have been, we have been preparing for this for almost two years. So we, we, we feel reasonably confident that we are ready to secure the areas that are under our control. But things like campaigning in the streets, things like how people behave in, in private gatherings, 
all of this, if they are done with political purposes in mind, all of this will be laid at the foot of the COMELEC later on. Kasi, election, COMELEC, hindi safe ang halalan. But we ask you to remember, ultimately, the safety of everyone depends on individual responsibility. If we all act safely, then we will all be safe, right? So kailangan tulong-tulong tayo. Again, the COMELEC assures the public that the places where you vote, those will be safe. But how you behave outside of those places, that would be an entirely different matter. Kailangan po natin tignan ng accountability din ng ibang moving parts ng halalan, including the candidates, including the campaigns, including their surrogates, including their campaigners, including yourselves. Okay? So, yan po ang uh, papel ng kabataan ng eleksyon and a brief rundown of what to expect in the coming elections. Thank you. Thank you, Sir James. Uh, very interesting, particularly doon sa what will happen on May 9, 2022. Uh, thank you po at uh, na, walk, walk through, uh, na walk through niyo po yung mangyayari dyan. So very important yung nasabi ni Sir James, hindi kailangan ng uh, COVID test, RT-PCR or antigen, hindi kailangan yan. Hindi rin kailangan ng vaccination card. But of course, kung kaya niyo magpa-vaccinate, magpa-vaccinate po kayo. And syempre, hindi rin kailangan ng national ID. Everyone ay uh, allowed to vote so long as registered ka. Thank you so much once again. Uh, Mr. James Jimenez for that presentation. Maraming salamat po. And of course, we have several questions coming in. Just keep them coming. If ever, sir, can they also ask you via your Twitter? Kasi act, very active ka rin sa Twitter. Yes, please. You can uh, you can connect to me at, uh, at Jabi Menes. All right. Okay. Maraming, maraming salamat po muli sa inyo, Director James Jimenez. It's really important that we register for the upcoming elections. As mentioned by our speakers, this is our responsibility and also our right to choose the path our nation will take as we have learned from the crisis. Voting competent and unifying leaders are important elements so that we can overcome this pandemic. And I know, sir, that you have to leave for an important COMELEC and bank uh, meeting right now. So allow me to ask you one burning question, sir, before you go. Given go everything that the COMELEC has been doing to reach the youth voters, what do you think needs to happen in order to motivate the youth to actually go out and cast their vote on election day amidst all the you know, the the threats of covid among others i think first of all no that the youth are already very well motivated kaya natin nakikita yung registration numbers na nakikita natin despite the pandemic despite all of the naysayers who said na wala magpaparehistro dahil covid bumabaha ang ang nagpaparehistro sa atin because as you pointed out the youth are aware of how important it is to select uh, the leaders of the, of the of our coming government pero specifically about election day kasi syempre iba naman yung registered voter iba yung voter turnout no kailangan lang siguro ng kabataan makita nila na yung mga katropa nila ay excited rin bumoto okay lampas na tayo dun sa panahon ng ating kasaysayan kung saan ang mga kabataan ay nakikinig sa authority figures lamang Okay? Nakikinig pa rin sa authority figures, yes. Pero kasing or mas ma-influensya pa yung mga katropa, yung peers. No? And if the peers are, are showing that they are excited to vote, that they remain committed through the long months running up to the elections, then that will encourage individuals to themselves go out to vote. So yun ang pinakamagandang gawin natin. Huwag tayong bibitaw sa pagpapaalala sa mga katropa natin, sa mga peers natin. Because our example will be what will motivate them to actually turn out to vote. Thank you, Sir James. Ayan na, huwag bibitaw sa pagpapaalala. Dapat tuloy-tuloy ang ating reminder sa lahat ng mga friends natin. And of course, our family members as well. All right, Sir James Jimenez, that's it for now. Para po sa viewers natin here on Zoom and on Facebook and YouTube, you may reach uh, Sir James on on Twitter. He's very active there and he answers all questions directed to him. Thank you so much once again, spokesperson po. of Comele, Director James Jimenez. All right, okay, so we are one with you, of course, in striving for a safe, fair, and free national elections 
for the future of our country. Okay, so now moving on with our program, we are very fortunate to have with us today the student regent of the University of the Philippines. We have Honorable Rene Luis Co. As our co, good morning. Good morning po. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. All right. Good morning, SR. We all know that student activism is synonymous with UP and as part of the Isambayan Youth and Kabataan Party List. How do we engage the younger generation in taking an active part in shaping our nation aside from the protest um, actions and walkouts? An important part of uh, engaging sa online and sa on-ground ay to keep discourse going. So, several levels yung ginagawa. We have yung personal na pakipag-usap, teaching out to our friends and family, classmates, ganyan, na hindi na nahaluan yung personal and political and even na blend sila para map mapakita na tung mga tong kailangan nating pag-usapan ay personal problems, personal issues na kailangan ng exposure and kailangan ng mas marami pang uh, airtime din. And nandito rin yung mga posts online kung saan ay pinapakita natin uh, creatively in different ways uh, how do we talk about these issues. And of course, andito yung pagsali sa organizations where we can direct our energies in formal settings or informal settings basta kasama yung ibang mga ka-age ka natin, yung mga nakaka-intindi din sa atin and paano natin ito nadidirect productively. Ayun po. Thank you, SR. Very important yung nabanggit mo na na yung creative ways natin in communicating kasi iba-iba na yung mga trip nga ng mga generation ngayon yung iba via TikTok, via Kumu, via tweets or whatsoever. Pwede nyo gawin yan para ma-send across yung message natin. So I think, uh, SR Ko, this is a good spot to segue to your talk. Go ahead. Thank you po, Sir Jules. Ayun, so magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Sana po ay uh, safe and dry kayo. And patuloy pa rin tayo na nandito sa loob ng ating mga uh, silid paaralan, which is actually our rooms. But now, ay titingnan natin ngayon paano natin magagamit yung energies natin, yung oras natin uh, for the pressing, the elephant in the room na kailangan nating um, tugunan. The elections this May 2022. Okay. So, uh, it's been a very rich discussion dito, no? Maraming social sciences na perspective sa pagtingin kung ano ang papel ng kabataan sa halalan. And nandito din po si kanina si Director Jimenez, pinakita niya kung sa side ng COMELEC, bakit nga ba important yung youth vote, ano yung differences in the mechanics in voting now, so that the youth is informed. So, ang dadaling ko naman siguro sa table dito ay yung dala ng organizing in ensuring that the kabataan, yung youth, ay continuously engaged and pasok dito sa ating conversation on youth leadership and why the elections is such an important and pivotal time to be engaged in this time. So, uh, dadaling ko din dito kung ano yung mga practical applications ng pagtingin natin sa uh, importance ng youth involvement. Okay. So, start off tayo. Ano ba ang kalagayan ng ating bayan? So, ngayon, gusto pa ba natin itong mga susunod? Ito, itong mga to na experience natin in different shades, no? Gusto pa ba natin ng palpak at militaristikong COVID-19 response kung saan our uh, ways by which we uh, uh, respond to the COVID-19 crisis ay hindi pa rin nababayaran yung mga healthcare workers ang tagal-tagal ng uh, pinagpapanawagan na kulang ng salary and benefits nila and patuloy na may default blanket response of a lockdown uh, kumpara kung kaya namang mas ma-program siya ng mas maayos noon. Gusto pa ba natin ang lumalalang krisis pang kabuhayan at ekonomiya kung saan ay itong mga lockdown na paulit-ulit and uh, confusing in its nature uh, so, sobrang dinajeopardize niya yung economy natin and of course more importantly yung ability ng ating iba't ibang mga Pilipino na makapasok sa trabaho makapag put on the table yung food and bread for the day and yung pagkakaroon ng household budget na sustains the social services and yung mga pangangailangan ng mga members ng family natin. Gusto pa ba natin ang krisis sa pagtuto kung saan ay ganito nga yung ating setup, yung ating pag-aaral ay sobrang hirap na gawin 
kung ikaw wala kang resources, kung inaccessible yung mga educational materials now. Even now, na parang sobrang liit ng space available, ang hirap makafocus. Hindi talaga akma na gantong setting. Kaya gusto nating makapagligtas balik eskwela. And we're able to lim- to use, at least limitedly, yung mga resources available sa schools. And then lastly, yung maraming human rights violations, pagsuko ng pambansang soberanya. Yung paulit-ulit na nakita natin that the drug war has caused 30,000 plus deaths na it actually took the attention of the International Criminal Court. And more than that, yung mga lupa natin, yung tubig natin, dapat ginagamit ng mga Pilipino. Pero nakikita natin na ginagamit ng, for the benefit of other countries. And rather than stand up for what's uh, supposedly right for the country, for its citizens, ay hindi ito ginagawa. And may mga proof nga na pwedeng gamitin para uh, sabihin, uy, sa amin yan, ha? Pero hindi siya Uh, sobrang dinay-neglect lang yung mga yun. So, because of that, um, nakita natin yung iba't-ibang mga problema ng lipunan. We can see it uh, in three ways. So, una, um, Filipino interests are subservient to foreign interests. We can also see that uh, ine-emphasize or mas nakaput on a pedestal yung mga mas mayayaman, yung mga elite, And hindi sobrang uh, binaburi yung mga needs, yung mga panawagan ng mas maraming Pilipino na karamihan ay marginalized. At pangatlo ay sobrang anti-democratic ng pamamahala dito. Yung freedoms natin, yung curtail, yung rights ay hindi nirecognize to the fullest extent that they can be. And yung kabataan ngayon, rather than really fully holistically developed, ay hindi niya nagagawa yun dahil sa iba't ibang barriers for this development, education, for, or uh, political involvement, etc. Ito ang lipunang kailangang baguhin upang yung mga susunod na henerasyon and even tayo mismo ay makatamasa ng maningning na kinabukasan. And that is why dito naman sa lahat na to, yung youth ay may pinakamalaking stake in building its future and ensuring na yung mga results ng mga kung anong events na mangyayari, pivotal events, ay in their favor. Kasi whatever mess that is going to be created now, and whatever positive things that we are able to get now, tayo magbe-benefit tayo rin ang makakatamasa ng kahirapan nito at the end of the day. And that is why we always say the kabataan is the pag-asa ng bayan. Kasi tayo ang talagang magbe-build ng kung ano ang bayan ngayon and in the future. So siguro alamin ba natin muna sino ang kabataan, sino ang pag-asa ng bayan. Within the youth, which is you know, labeled as a sector itself, ay maraming subsectors in it. And dyan yung kabataang estudyante. Nariyan din yung mga out-of-school youth. And meron yung mga kabataang nagtatrabaho. And nandiyan din yung mga kabataang kababaihan, LGBT, mga IPs, bahagi ng pagbansang minorya, na nga naging biktima ng sakuna at kalamidad. Differently abled youth, youth in situations of armed conflict, and young offenders. All of them ay may dalang uh, sariling mga calls, mga panawagan. May mga nuances na dinadala sa policies na dapat ini-implement because nakikita nila kung paano ito nakaka- Um, nakaka-harm sa kanila and what can be improved and they have clear creative ideas on how they can be improved. Okay. So, bakit nga ba ganito mag-isip yung kabataan? What makes uh, the youth such an attractive sector na talagang sila tayo yung inaapilan lagi at these times? So, here I listed five uh, reasons why Una ay bukas sila sa mga bago at progresibong, progresibong idea. Uh, tayo, hindi pa tayo siguro na um, nababog down ng cynicism of the world. And when we go into settings, when we go into our endeavors, ay uh, meron tayong dala na energy, na pag-iisip that things can be better and will be shaped to be better. And that's why yung mga pagtingin natin sa kung ano yung mundo dapat, uh, we have very progressive um, thing, progressive uh, ideas about it. Pangalawa, 
ay kasiglahan ng pag-iisip at pangatawan. So, we're pretty young. Marami tayong energy. Ang, yung cells natin ay uh, replenished and tayo ay meron pang mga uh, nakakonek yung ating body and yung isip very well. So, dahil dito ay mas nagpo-flow din yung creative juices better. And ito rin, may oras tayong may ilaan sa ibang mga bagay. Okay, kumpara siguro sa mas strict na schedules ng mga older generations na nakatay in doon sa kanilang job, critical at malikhain tayong makapag-isip kung saan ay hindi pa nga tayo nagtatay down sa traditional na pagtingin ng mundo kung hindi ay meron tayong dala na uh, different ways of thinking and changing kung ano yung nandito ngayon. And lastly, meron tayong dalisay na optimismo kung saan iniisip natin na kaya naman uh, baguhin tong mga things at the end of the day. Uh, hindi pa tayo na kikita na set in stone na tong rules na to. We can see that things can still change. Yan. So, and magiging positibo lang mga ito kung gagamitin natin yung mga traits na to para sa pagsisilbi sa bayan at pagbabago ng lipunan. Uh, nakita din naman natin that these are traits that can also be used um, uh, wrongly, not wrongly, pero in a misguided way. Yung youth, pag hindi nade-develop itong uh, yung kanyang moral compass or nag-guidean kung paano ba natin magagamit yung energies na to positively, they can be used in different ways na hindi makakabuti at the end of the day para sa Pilipino, para sa sarili niyang sektor. Kaya naman mahalaga para sa kabataan itong mga endeavors na to yung and pakikipag-usap, checking upon themselves with their friends, uh, how we're doing and paano ba natin na-orient yung sarili natin for service. Not, yung, kahit hindi agad-agad sa bayan. No? Pero in small ways, like sa student council, through your organizations, through your families. And in this way, ay nakakultivate natin kung paano magkakaroon ng sense of responsibility that we can connect and tie into the larger endeavors in the country. Yan. And speaking of larger endeavors in the country, and dito yung pinaka-pressing, no? yung darating na halala ng 2022. And actually, ito yung kinoy ng isang bayan youth, sino ba ang susunod at yung parang magiging halalan heroes this 2022? Ito ang botante ng kabataan. Yeah. So, Director Jimenez uh, painted a clear picture with graphs even kung sino ba yung kabataan no? and who are the youth voters. So, I, medyo igagross ko na yung part na to. So, RA 8044 says ang kabataan Pilipino ay yung mga 15 to 30 years old. Eh, ibig sabihin, one in every three Filipinos are part of the youth. Uh, currently, there are 23, 25 million or 40% out of the 62 million voters uh, being young, young voters, including 4 million first-time voters. And ito na lang yung gusto kong i-emphasize. Yung power ng youth to be able to really shift the elections. Pinakita po kanina ni uh, Director Jimenez uh, yung how much of the vote will be coming from young people expectedly in 2022. Pero ito, uh, kung boboto tayo uh, sa ngayong halalan na to looking at our trends before, noong 2016, 70% lamang ng mga botanting 18 to 35 ang boboto. Tapos 60% lang noong 2019. Tapos kung we take into consideration yung the number of votes you need to win a presidential race, which is 6.6 million votes, tapos kung i-count natin, yung 7.5 million youth voters uh, na, na hindi bumoto, na registered, kasi bumoto sila. Plus, yung 7 million na hindi registered ay nag-register and bumoto, tayo ang magdidikta ng kinabukasan. Tayo rin yung magpasabi kung sino yung ating mga leaders, anong policies yung implement nila, and paano mas may involve yung youth in national affairs. So I would like to show you this example in Zambia. So sa Zambia ay nagkaroon ng kanilang uh, national elections actually last month lang. And yung pinaka-pinapakita, ina-emphasize dito, ay yung block ng youth voters. They turned out in huge numbers. Uh, si Zambia ay uh, 
kung titignan natin yung kanyang classification sa Freedom House, uh, kung anong klaseng country siya, ay tinatawag siyang partly free. Dahil ito sa maraming um, curtailments in the freedoms of uh, expression, of the press, or in organization, etc. Sa so, wak na yung kabataan dito. Kaya naman, dito sa election ay pinakita nila yung kanilang kapangyarihan. Ito, 4 million young people between the ages 18 to 24 registered to vote. Tapos sobrang laking turnout nito. Uh, and ito yung naging basis ng uh, pag-vote ng yung parang rising opposition leader nila dahil sa, siya ay may dala na better policies and ideas to strengthen to state institutions. Something na hindi pinakita uh, and even uh, in road pa ng, ng uh, leader nila before. And it sounds familiar, di ba? So ito din, uh, sinabi nila it, this turnout was the highest since the 1991 elections. And those below 40 years of age constituted more than half the electorate. Similar to ours, as yung, yung pinakitang pie chart kanina ni Director. So, uh, ito, gamitin natin tong uh, inspiration. Yung youth voters, sila talaga yung makakapag-turn ng tide. Dahil sila yung may dalang numbers. And kung tayo ay na-orient lang na uh, for service yung ating mga deeds, uh, and for this particular uh, national affair na pinakamalaki, paano natin uh, i-orient ito for service? Uh, we can attend more voters' education, uh, voters educational fora. We can talk to our friends on how we're able to vote wisely, sabi nga kanina. And at the end of the day, ay magamit yung kapangyarihan na sobrang raw and kayang i-harness talaga for change. So ano ang tungkulin natin ngayong eleksyon? So pinakita na po kanina yung timeline. So eto siya, refresh ko sa inyo. Uh, May 9 yung ating araw ng pagboto. It's only some months from now na. No? So here are some things na uh, I'd like to uh, emphasize then yung mga responsibilities natin. Uh, during the elections, before the elections, bilang botante and then bilang member ng mga organizations. So una, if you're a voter, ayan, bagong halalan, ito yung mga kailangan natin gawin. Una, very important, magparehistro. Ito yung pinaka-important para magamit natin yung right to suffrage natin. Kailangan ay alam ng state yung credentials natin. Kaya niyang i-verify na tayo totoong tao. And that's why kailangan natin magparehistro. Pangalawa, alamin ang clustering of precincts sa lugar. Ensure na uh, kung saan ka man boboto, alam mo kung paano pumunta doon para hindi ka lost uh, pag, pag malapit na election day. Maging pamilyar sa gagamitin pamamaraan sa pagboto. So it's automated, in person, and syempre following health protocols. It's a good thing that Director Jimenez uh, showed kanina kung ano yung mga mafollow natin or makikita ng bago. No? Take note po natin yon para handa tayo na uh, makapasok agad, makaboto agad on election day. And then of course, makipag-ugnayan lagi sa lokal na COMELEC kung may mga nais na linawin. Available yung iba't ibang resources ng COMELEC and of course, yung mga voters education platforms of different groups online. Okay. Alamin at sundin mga panuntunan at update na nilalabas. And ito more critically, kilatisin ang mga kandidato at kanilang mga plataforma. Alamin natin kung sino mga to. They're going to be surfacing uh, now yung intent nila uh, in time for the October filing. And then alamin kung pan, pang ilang numero sa listahan ang inyong mga napiling kandidato. And of course, halalan, dal, du, pwede tayo magdala ng sample ballot para mas mabilis yung pagboto. And report natin kung anong mga, mga masasaksihang pandaraya sa mga anti-fraud network. Yan. But of course, uh, I'm also here to show to you yung uh, pinakamalaking power ng kabataan when we collectivize and do activities, endeavors together. And that's why uh, I encourage everyone to join organizations para yung efforts natin ay pwede nating mas madirect uh, in, in one collective na mas ma-amplify yung gusto nating mangyari. So bilang organization ay mas marami pa tayong pwedeng magawa sa paghahanda uh, sa darating na halalan. 
So, pwede tayong bumuo ng mga voters registration, education networks in your localities. Uh, inform natin yung mga communities natin sa kanilang mga kapangyarihan. Gumawa ng mga paraan para tiyaking registrado ang lahat ng mga kabataan na aabot. So, so lalo na sa mga loka, uh, sa localities no kung saan uh, magkakalapit-lapit lang tayo, pwede natin uh, makita kung may mga kabataan ba in the area, hindi pa registered, mapa-register sila. Mag-host ng mga electoral fora para lalong makilala ang mga kandidato and of course maglunsad ng mga talakayan gaya nito para yung kabataan at iba pang residente informed sila. And yung election na darating ay sana nga hindi ruled by personality politics or ito ang nai-emphasize pero makita yung mga kanilang platforms, yung policies, stances nila in different issues and paano sila um, makaka-resolve and makakarinig ng mga calls, demands ng sectors and to resolve their issues as well. And of course, tukuyin ang mga kagyat o tampok na usapin sa komunidad na dapat tugunan ng mga kandidato sa mga local uh, sa mga local litis para masagot ng mga local candidates sa munisipyo, sa lungsod, sa probinsya. Ito ay magsisilbing pamantayan sa nagkakaisang mamayan, mamamayan para sa pagboto. Yan. And some of the places where you can get involved ay dito sa UP Office of the Student Regent, at least if you're a UP student, I we will have more um of election-related activities, so I hope that you can join us. But if uh, kayo ay kabataan lang, 15 to 35, and gusto nyong mas makoncentrate natin ng ating efforts, pwede po tayong sumali sa isang bayan youth. Uh, you can check out po yung aming mga links dito, and you can join using this tiny earth. Ayan. Uh, maraming salamat po sa pakikinig, at uh, nandito na po tayong nagtatapos. I hope na uh, mas Uh, nainganyo tayo, nakita natin yung uh, power ng kabataan and dahil dito ay mas magiging involved pa tayo. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din sa'yo SR Rene Co ng UP System. Thank you so much for reminding especially sa lahat ng mga kabataan natin na maging bahagi ng mga organisasyon at uh, palakasin itong mga organisasyon na to lalo na paparating na ang ating halalan. Thank you so much for that very insightful presentation, student region ko. Malaki at ang ang hamon sa atin na maabot ang lahat ng kabataan and we can do that kung magpapalimita tayo sa online platforms pero to dive in more into this matter we have the president of the PUP Communication Society we have Carol, Caroline Jean Picard Caroline good morning um, good morning po sir Jules Hello. Right. Hello. Okay, so before we begin, uh, um, bahagi mo naman sa amin Caroline, ano nga ba itong ginagawa ng PUP Communication Society? Um, yes po, uh, PUP Communication Society, we are the premier and mother organization of the College of Communication. And for more than 34 years, we've been serving the college, we've been embracing the mission of um, producing um, excellent student leaders, um, creating an inclusive environment for all and of course serving the students with um, unceasing love and passion. Also, PUP Comsoc is um, known for its dedication um, in um, aiming our goals, pursuing our goals by means of organizing events such as symposiums, workshops, um, leadership trainings, team buildings, and of course, outreach programs. Alright. Mga very interesting lahat ng mga activities and projects ng PUP Communication Society. So on that note, Caroline, go ahead with your presentation. Yes. Um, can you please um, share my presentation? So greetings, dear attendees and panelists. I'm honored here to share my knowledge on the youth vote, um, defying expectations and upholding their responsibilities. So Next, please. So as Honorable Rene said earlier, that we as the youth, we have higher stakes in what's to come for the nation. And I'm just going to add more from a youth's perspective and discuss um, what's in store for the 2022 national elections and what we should look forward to from the youth from us. So first is to raise your hand and raise your standards. Next, please. So at, at this time, it's, it's, uh, it's a time to ask ourselves if we are content with this representative, if how we are being present, 
represented by um by the national government and the youth today we have higher standards on beauty queens beauty pageants rather than of our politicians diba sabi nga kanya ni Dr. Joaquin na kanina sa na mayroon sa Pilipinas nakasanayan natin yung bumoto on based on popularity and not on um the the uh, the qualities of this um public servants and that should not be the case and we must also be critical of this public servants or else we might just be settling for leaders who may not really represent what is beneficial for the people so looking at how our leaders handled this global crisis really plays a significant role in our decision making therefore um, as future leaders um, we must choose those who are proactive in immersion so Diba, nakikita natin ngayon sa, sa society natin na mayroong present injustices, human rights violation, lalong-lalo na sa mga minorities and sa mga oppressed. And napakalaki, napakalaking hamon para sa mga public servant na lagit-laging maging mga bosses ng um, minority groups such as um, LGBTQIA+, indigenous people, um, women, and of course, the workers of informal sectors. And um, we should remember that um, the public servants must always align their decisions with their character. Sabi din kanina ng other um, panels natin. And the laws must always be for the people. Um, next, please. Um, next is you have democracy is an action. And it is a participatory process. It was said by Ms. Carmel Fonduenda, the executive director of the Philippine Center for Gen Investigative Journalism. So one of our rules as the youth and the citizens of a democratic country is um, taking our politicians into account. Ano, diba? It always works both ways. And we must exercise our power, exercise our right to suffrage, and because, you know, voting for right leaders, it really equates to a better healthcare system and equal rights for all. And there was a survey um, conducted by the ASEAN Study Centers, which states that 17.9% of the Filipinos, next please, um, really strongly disapprove of the government's pandemic response. And um, it is considered as the highest disapproval rate among the South Asian countries. So what does this say about, about us and for us, youth? Um, it is a reminder that our job is to reassess the information uh, and the performances of the national government, of course, such as the urgency to focus on their responses when it comes to priorities like the um, ABS-CBN shutdown, the red taggings, and the lack of budget for our healthcare workers. So despite the pandemic, that's that's really, that's their focus, and that's what we should reassess. And doing so, reassessing this, it will really drive us to choose leaders that are competent and just. Next, please. So we have to actively participate and contribute. So as a youth, diba, masyado tayong affected with what we call the generation gap, kung saan yung um, opinions natin, um, dinadiscredit siya with stereotypes such as um, wala naman tayo ng mga panahon na yun, masyado tayong pawoke. And that, um, that sayings really can rapidly make us feel disempowered. And therefore, we tend to believe that our voices will not be heard or even if we are heard, we are not really taken seriously. So we should keep in mind na if gumawa ka ng kahit anong contribution no matter how small it is, sa abot ng makakaya mo, it could really make a huge difference, ba? Sabi nga din kanina ni um, student regent na kahit hindi agad-agaran, kahit hindi para sa bayan, no? um, it's um, a part for the student councils, the organizations to really do and contribute to the society and to the community. So next is, as part of the youth, next please, um, despite all the negativity, it is really essential that we engage in formal political processes and conversations because you know, we, have, we have a say 
and formulating formulating the today's and tomorrow's politics. So I, what I'm asking from the youth is please don't give them the power and the satisfaction of being excluded or disengaged from um, the decisions making and the debates about the political issues or else really a significant portion and we've seen this earlier in the in the statistics that a significant portion of the population could have little um to know uh, influence in the decision that will affect great affectly um, affect the nation and lastly our active contributions we can we have seen it from the past that it had already forced regimes from power and um, we can still bring democratic values to life. Just as um, Dr. Jimenez said earlier that if there is youth leadership, um, we will be able to infuse new ideas and solutions to problems that directly affects the youth. So next please. Ayon. So um, second to the last is be armed with the right information. So for those, those who have watched the first episode of the webinar series, it was about trolling and how it spurred fake news and information, especially the digital age. And it is crucial for us young people, especially for the first time voters to arm ourselves with fact check informations and we have to do this by doing background checks on trusted sources. Um, one of my tips is to look at the history of these candidates trying to earn our votes. We can do this by reviewing the bills they voted for, um, reading the, the statements about um, essential issues, and we have to be vigilant on these reports. Like what was said by um, the panelists earlier, we have to be vigilant and do not be blinded by flowering words of from advertisement advertisements and we have to really focus on the policies by these candidates um next please um next please so lastly we have the social media is the game changer next please so as we know um political interactions are no longer limited on election season di ba nga sabi kanina na dapat ang start ng um pag uh, pag bibigay ng candidates ng kanilang platforms pag pag pupunta sa mga iba't ibang ano um, places in the countries should really start by next year. Pa. And that's not happening in our country right now. We can see politicians, public servants who are directly lobbying their advocacies through social media. And they really are the dominating um, social platforms such as Twitter, TikToks, and even, even gaming apps. And what we should do is we have to balance the scales as youth by questioning the things we see online and maximizing, mobilizing all the social media spaces to speak with positive changes and initiating an open dialogue. And most of the youth, um, syempre nahihirapan tayo sa online class, but really there's a, still a great population na mayroong unlimited access sa internet and to all the information. and as media literate people, as the youth na maalam din sa media, we have to really be responsible din sa pag-educate ng, um, ng mga respective communities and our families, even our families na magpalabas na ng fake news, ganyan. We have to give them the right and correct information given na lahat nga ng fake news ay sobrang dami na sa internet and those uh, media, media illiterate are the targets of the troll websites. So lastly then, um, nanood ako ng documentary before ni Marisa. It was The Thousand Cuts. And it, it said that there really is a big challenge pa regarding to the access of um, right and proper information in the media. And therefore, 
most adults and elders, they rely on alternative media such as blogs, um, Facebook, rather than the mainstream. So my last words is to really let us keep an open mind and um, enlighten the unaware. Always enlighten this illiterate people in a civilized manner. So that's all for my presentation. I hope um, I gave a its perspective for the upcoming national elections. All right. Thank you so much, Caroline Jean Picard from the um, from PUP Communication Society. Thank you so much for reminding us, especially on the part of being armed with right information, especially now when social media is um, um, is infested, basically with several disinformation. When you say kasi disinformation and misinformation, disinformation, there is um, what's this? There is. Do I have audio? Yes, yes, you have audio. Okay, okay all right. Okay. Uh, where uh, information, kapag disinformation yung sinasabi, merong intent to confuse. So let's be very wise when we're using social media. All right. So at this point, once again, thank you so much, Caroline, for that. And we definitely agree with you that we must utilize all forms of communication, especially that we have Facebook, Twitter, even TikTok, and almost all kinds of social media platforms where the youth are very active. So please stay at this point for the Q&A session. Okay, at this point, may I request all our speakers to please switch on your videos for the Q&A session. So once again, we have here Dr. Louis Benedict Ignacio. Okay, John is back, by the way. Okay, so at this point, before we proceed to the Q&A, we will have our um, next speaker. Okay, John Marlu. John, are you here? John? Okay. No, po. Hello. John. Hey, John, are you here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll just wait for... Yes, no, po. Can you hear me, po? We're here. Okay, okay. Go ahead. So, kamusta? No, okay, ano, ano yung mga efforts natin para mas palakas no, ang voter education sa mga kabataan? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, John? Okay, Good go ahead. Morning, sir. Sir Jules, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear Ayan. you. Ayan. Asensya na po. Uh, at may apologies po kasi po nagkaroon po ng power interruption sa lugar namin. So, kailangan ko pa pong mag-transfer doon po sa uh, kabilang barangay po para po makakonek. But, uh, to confirm po, okay po ba yung connection ko or mabagal po? Can you hear me po ba? We can hear you, John. Ayan, okay, sige po. Siguro po hindi na po muna ako mag-start mag-video uh, so that makakonek po ako ng maayos. Ayan. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I am JM Absede of us. All right. Okay. So we um we couldn't hear JM at the moment dahil uh, malakas din po ang ulan ngayon dito sa area natin. So subukan natin uh, balikan si JM Absidy later for his talk. But in the meantime, as mentioned earlier, uh, we will be having our Q&A. And as part of this Q&A is back to our uh, fun quiz na sinagutan po ninyong lahat sa ating Mentimeter poll. So let's see the results of our Mentimeter poll. The first question is, nakarehistro ka na ba para sa darating na eleksyon? So, so far... 84 of our participants uh, said that yes, registrado na sila, samantala 35 ang hindi pa. Okay, so alam niyo na gagawin nyo ha, sa 35 natin, kailangan nyo magparehistro bago ang deadline sa katapusan ng buwan. At ito na, ito ang focus natin sa part na ito. Okay, so ito yung word cloud natin. Ang question is, ano ang basehan ninyo 
sa pagpili ng isang kandidato. Babasahin natin yung pinakamalalaki dito sa word cloud natin. So we have um, makatao, okay? tapat, may integrity, makabayan, competent, responsible, makabansa, honest, may paninindigan, among others. So with the word cloud that we are seeing right now, I'd like to ask uh, several of our uh, speakers right now for your thoughts about this matter. No? Um, maybe let's start on, on, on the sociological perspective, siguro. Dr. Louis Ignacio, are you still here? What's your thought? What are your thoughts on, on, on the word cloud right now? Yeah, um, and as I'm seeing the the at the center of the word cloud is makatao. No? And I think this is a very good characteristic of um, uh, the type of people that we have in this particular forum that um, kapag nag-iisip tayo ng uh, decision or kapag um, uh, nag nagko-considera tayo ng magiging action, uh, hindi na lang yung sarili natin yung iniisip natin. Kung hindi, um, kung ano ang magiging epekto din nito sa ibang tao. Kaya siguro din yung yung hinahanap natin para sa isang kandidato ay yung may ganoong uh, pagtingin din may may similar perspective in in their action as well that when when they act when they choose when they decide on particular laws and when, and how it will be implemented it should not only be for them it should not only be for the benefit of of a few uh, but uh, for the common good i think may malaking and gusto kong bigyan ng emphasis yun no yung difference ng greatest good for the greater number versus the common good kasi kapag sinabi mong greatest good for the greater number meron at meron kang maiiwan pero kung common good ang uh, pinupursu mo at uh, makatao yung perspektibo na tinitignan tinitignan mo uh, gagawin mo yung lahat para masigurado na walang may iwan, walang maragabyado, lahat ay makikinabang. So uh, I like where this word cloud is going, especially na nakafocus tayo sa makatao. Thank you, Dr. Louie. Can we hear it from Dr. Uh, Joaquin? Yeah, so yes, thanks, Jules. Actually, curious tong world cloud natin kasi lumalabas dito yung mga... So, hindi na tayo more concerned dun sa ano talaga eh, dun sa mismong credentials, kumbaga. Hindi lang yung makalino or magaling. Pero dapat, ano eh, moral siya eh. Nandun na yung, ano eh, nandun na yung sentimiento natin. So, yung ganyang klaseng pag-iisip, actually curious yan dahil for the longest time, the Philippines, at least yung political atmosphere natin, yung police pulisopia natin, hinihiwalay talaga yung, yung morality dun sa mga batas. Yan yung tinatawag na legal positivistic mindset. Kaya natuwa lang ako dahil baka tama si Sir James na nagkakaroon na ng pagpabago sa pag-iisip ng mga botante natin. At yun ang kailangan natin, yung mga bagong pag-iisip ng mga, ng mga kabataan natin. Thank you, Dr. Joaquin. Uh, let's hear it from SR Rene. SR ko? Okay. Na-pressure po ako konti na i-apply yung mga social science concepts na kunin ko muna sa balon ng mga <laughs> napag-aralan ko noon. And, pero agree din po ako na uh, striking yung center or yung mga nandoon, uh, makatao, integrity, tapat, uh, it really shows na ang hinahanap natin sa candidates ngayon ay yung humanity nila. So, uh, yung pagkaka-relate niya kung paano nakikita na this same person shares these same struggles, understands them, and dahil may understanding tayo, ay kaya niya yung i-action sa policies. Ganyan. Kasi um, kung ang hinahanap nga naman natin ay siguro yung uh, street smarts or kung ano man, ay uh, hindi it it might not mean necessarily, it might not translate to understanding kung ano yung pinagdadaanan ng sectors, ng normal na Filipino, ngayong nasa iba't ibang krisis yung kaharap natin. So, na, nakita ko lang doon na um, siguro ito yung hinahanap ngayon in the face of this present administration kung saan you can argue na nawala <laughs> or 
na, na sobrang natago yung gantong traits in how uh, nililid yung country. And kaya nga yung hinahanap siya pabalik. Thank you, Sir Rene. Uh, lalo na sa ano, no, aspetong makatao, eh, talagang nawala yung konsepto na yan itong uh, past five years. Uh, that's my personal take. Okay. All right. So now let's proceed. No? Maraming salamat po sa mga nag-participate sa ating Mentimeter Fun Quiz. And we will also be having a post-test later on just to assess if our audience have increased their knowledge from this webinar. Okay? And there's a lot of work to be done, but never forget para po ito sa ating bayan. All right. So at this point, we will entertain some questions from our audience. Okay? So sisilipin ko po dito sa ating Q&A. And maaari po kayong magpadala pa ng inyong questions dito para sa mga nasa Zoom natin para mabasa po natin. For questions addressed to spokesperson Jimenez, as mentioned earlier, you can directly um, tweet him, um, of course, via Twitter, okay? And he, he responds uh, immediately. So I'd like to take this question from an anonymous attendee. The question is, what are your views on the idea that we have bad politicians during elections and that the people would just resort to voting for the lesser e evil. Okay, so ano po ang pananaw niyo dyan, uh, Dr. Ignacio? Okay, um, medyo mahirap yan, mahirap yan sagutin from a sociological perspective, baka mas philosophical, but I think uh, yung lesser evil kasi, um, uh, I, I don't, personally believe that we should settle on a lesser evil. I mean, we should push for qualified candidates and uh, we should push for people who really have the proper motivation to run the country. Pwede kasi natin sabihin na kaya lesser evil kasi wala naman talagang perfectong kandidato. Walang, walang perfect candidate. But it should not stop us for, uh, from, from pushing and from selecting uh, people who we will not even categorize as a lesser evil, but the appropriate leader for that post. Um, kapag kasi uh, tinanggap natin na we're voting for this person because this person is the lesser evil, then we gave up on the idea that the election, that the government will be run by a qualified candidate, by a qualified person. Kaya ako personally, I do not, I do not necessarily subscribe to that idea of voting for the lesser evil. Maybe JJ has a different perspective on that. <laughs> yeah, so interesting question actually. I agree with Louis in a way, because to say that you're you have bad candidates, it's already to have a value judgment regarding the current pool of candidates that we have. Tapos we say na oh we'll rank to these bad people and let's look for the lesser of them. Pero yung ganyang klase ng pag-iisip already assumes that you have all bad apples. And I don't think that that's the right attitude when you are looking for a person who will represent you or represent us or that will govern us. Kasi kung ganun na pag-iisip, polluted na yan eh. Ang tawag nila dyan, poisoning the will. Pinasan mo na yung, yung, yung mismong pool mo. So, maaari na ang pinakamagandang tingnan muna, may tatlo kang tanong eh. Yun nga yung tinatanong ko kanina eh. Itong tao ba na to qualified para i-represent ako? Itong tao ba na to i-insure yung welfare o kapahanan nating lahat? Will it secure, will he or she secure justice and fairness for everyone? Kaya kung masasagot mo yung mga tanong na yun, yung tao na yun masasagot na yes, siya yun, then he's not a bad egg or she's not a bad person. He's not a lesser evil or she's not a lesser evil because she'll be qualified to the post. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. On your view naman, uh, SR Rene, no? uh, pagdating sa usapin na, kanina yung usapin na pipili na lang tayo ng lesser evil, yung iba naman, um, kahit na gusto nila prinsipyadong boto sana, mapapaisip sila na baka masayang lang yung boto ko kung hindi na ma-winnable si candidate. So ano ang pananaw mo sa ganunong klaseng mindset? Ayan. So it's it's very political non yung parang uh, you have to weigh yung siguro titignan natin kung may mga gusto tayong um, ma-enact na policies at the end of the day. Uh, 
paano natin siya may ensure that uh, that's, that is the future na makikita natin. Uh, do we go for yung parang the winnable one? Do we go for uh, yung talagang dapat? You know, that is a very important question na kailangan nating uh, masagot. And dito, sa, syempre, pagtingin natin ay um, yung, yung kailangan nating leader ay yung prinsipyado, yung nag engage sa mga issues, yung mga sagot sa uh, mga problema na nag-crop up. And hindi lang dahil may dala siya na, um, na people na pwedeng bumoto sa kanya. So, it's currently September. So, parang bringing it on a practical level, I, I hope na ma-engage tayo dito sa mga campaigns para uh, mas ma-boost yung mga candidates na gusto natin, uh, whether it be on the level of issues, whether it be sa kanyang pag-campaign, para yung nakita natin na gusto natin candidate, ganyan, ay siya yung magkaroon ng mas malaking chance sa dulo. Thank you, SR. Okay, the next question, uh, siguro we can uh, hear the angle of uh, maybe so sociological and philosophical. Okay, the question is, do you see the Philippine government as socially aware or power greedy? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> medyo, ano ha, medyo uh, pahirap ng pahirap yung mga tanong uh, but that's a good sign <laughs> that uh, our our participants really are are thinking and the questions are really critical well we we can and dalawa dalawa yung characteristics na binigay niya no? socially aware and and politically greedy um Pwede kasi natin siyang tinitignan as two extremes uh, na one, is, one, one should exist without the other or pwede natin siyang tignan na both can exist in different varieties. Um, one, for socially aware, I think that's a must. Okay? I think that's a must. That the, the, the people in the government, people in the administration should be aware of what's happening from all sectors or in all sectors from the ground up and vice versa. Um, for us to, or for the people in the government to provide better judgment, a eh, quality decisions, they should be aware, they should be socially immersed into uh, what's happening. Politically greedy, Okay. Medyo negative agad yung, ano eh, yung, yung connotation natin sa salitang greedy. But we have to uh, accept the reality that in the discourse of politics, you need power. And whoever is in the government, especially if, even if the intention is very good, even if the intention is very good, they need power. So hindi man greedy, Kaya nga iba-ibang iba level, ano? hindi man greedy, they need power to convert these good intentions into policies and to implement these policies into actual work on the ground. So baka hindi siya extreme. Okay? Baka in, in gradation, in different levels, uh, one socially aware, yes, uh, power hungry, needing of power, yes, but not to the extent of greeting over power. Thank you, Dr. Louis. Dr. JJ. Yeah, interesting question about social awareness or political greediness. No? I agree with Louis again, na hindi siya opposing extremes. Eh. So, hindi porket socially aware ka, hindi ka na politically greedy or vice versa. But on the other hand, what do we mean by a government, our current Philippine government, having those qualities? of being socially aware or being politically greedy. Kasi ang nakikita ko dun sa tanong, parang may assumption na disjunction siya. Either ito or ito. Kung ito, dapat hindi ito or whatever. Ngayon, maaring angulohin natin ng ibang klaseng, patignan natin sa ibang angulo yung, yung tanong. So tanongin natin, whether nararamdaman ba natin as uh, the citizen of this country, yung malasakit ng gobyerno to para sa kapakanan natin. So, yun yung social awareness. Tapos, tanongin natin yung political side, yung greediness. Yung gobyerno ba natin na 
currently nakaupo, ay gusto pang hawakan yung position na yun. Tama eh, power siya eh. So yung power or authority, kailangan yun para magpatakbo ng gobyerno. We legitimize the government to our vote or whatever by paying taxes. Yun yung legitimation ng government. Eh. Yun yung power niya doon ang gagaling. Pero ang tanong doon, yung gobyerno ba natin, gusto pang hawakan yung power na yun? Gusto pa ba nilang nandun pa rin sila sa posisyon para hindi sila matimanda or whatever in the future. Pero yun yung ano. So, tanong, socially aware translates into nararamdaman ba natin yung, yung gobyerno, yung power ng gobyerno sa atin. Napapangalagaan ba nila yung healthcare natin, yung healthcare workers natin, ekonomiya natin, education sector, and so on and so forth. Ngayon, kung negative ang answer mo doon, then maaaring isusuri away yung mga nasa gobyerno ngayon. Ngayon, kung positive naman yung answer mo na gusto pa rin nilang nasa power, kaya katatakbo yung anak, di ba? Never mind. Uh, mahirap magkomento dito sa <laughs> dito. Eh, baka gusto pa nilang nandun pa rin sila sa kapangyarihan. Which is, well, depends on you if you are for that kind of power. Thanks, Dr. JJ. Uh, before I proceed to the our youth reps, no, um, uh, follow up lang nung sa nabanggit mo, Dr. JJ, kasi di ba parang nabanggit mo kanini malasakit. So pumasok sa akin doon na how can we go beyond the slogans or the promises during campaigns? Kasi di ba minsan nadadala tayo na tapang at malasakit, tuwid na daan, yung mga disente, yung mga ganyan. How can we, is there any way that we could measure a candidate beyond the slogans that they are giving. Kasi ito, ito. Personal comment ko ulito. Tapang at malasakit. Definitely. Siguro may tapang sa ilang bagay. Pero yung malasakit, obviously it's not there. So how can we go beyond the sloganeering and measure our candidates na pwede natin magamit during elections? No, that's a very good question and I challenge yung communication scientists natin dito eh. O yung mga psychologists natin. Eh. Kasi there's a kind of phenomenon na tinatawag na sloganeering. Eh. That is, or yung sound biting. Eh. So kailangan natin yung message mo, kayo ito kaikli, tapos dala-dala sa masa. Parang, ano ka, tantuwa ka eh, di ba? Ano yun? Para sa mahirap si whoever. Or tapang at malasakit. Or tumitudaan. Yung mga ganyang klaseng slogans kasi biglang ano dyan eh, parang, parang advertisement. Lo, nakita mo, uy, bibili na ako niyan. Parang ano eh, yun yung campaign eh. Yung na-market nila yung sarili nila. So how do we go beyond that? Eh, syempre, kailangan mo tingnan yung produkto. That is, di ba, kung bibili ka ng shampoo, hindi lang dahil sa 9 out, out of 10 uh, movie stars eh ginagamit yung shampoo na yun. Tignan, tignan mo. Subukan mo. O maayos ba yung buhok mo? Mapal ba? O numibis ba? And so on. By the same token, pag tingnan mo yung mga kandidato mo, yung mga... Well, nagkaano na nga ngayon, nagkakampanya na ngayon, hindi mo, yung track record. May lumabas pa talaga na patas yung kung bisista na to o yung senador na to. Or meron bang na-contribute o naambag sa bayan itong presidente na to o itong vice president na to. Doon mo makikita yun eh. Hindi lang sa slogan, tingnan mo kung ano yung track record, kung ano yung naging output. Kasi yun yung pinaka-measure mo lang para makita yun. Eh, hindi mo na kailangan tingnan yung intensyon ng tao eh. Kasi maaaring... Uh, good intentions, bad actions, or sa kabilang banda, bad intentions, pero good actions yun na labas. Ang tingnan lang natin yung outputs. I hope that's <laughs> clear. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. JJ. Okay, so for our youth trips, we have, um, of course, uh, still uh, SR Rene and Caroline uh, here on Zoom. Um, there is a question here. As someone who is a first-time voter, how can we distinguish those candidates who have a clear and good uh, who have clear and good, <clears throat> sorry, good intentions for their platforms and those who are doing it only to gather popularity and for theatrics. And para sa mga first-time voters natin, um, can we hear it first from um, Caroline, maybe muna? Caroline, then SR. Hello. Um, hello. Medyo rinig na ba? Yes. Hello, sorry, medyo choppy kasi yung ano. Could you um, maybe repeat it, Sir Jules, po? Okay. Maybe may unstable connection po. Yeah, the question is... Saan na ba yan? Teka, ang daming pumasok. Um, as a first-time voter, or, or the question... Wait, I'm still looking for it. Ba't nawawala? Okay, as a first-time voter, parang the question is, paano tayo makakagawa ng mas maayos na, na pagboto? lalo na't maraming mga theatrics na 
na mga lumalabas. Parang how do we draw the line? Ah, oh, okay po. Um, kasi before, even before na uh, registered voter ako, syempre, um, meron na akong mga um, criteria, may mga standards na ako for our country's leaders. And since then, um, it has have always remained the same. Uh, first is tinitignan ko yung moral values nila, yung um, high political experience, and of course, yung current social and world scale um, issues na inilalahok nila po. Um, um, alam naman natin na what we strive for and push forwards is um, the betterment of our communities and our governing powers. And in my opinion, um, officials should put the welfare of the citizens as a priority. And especially in the most crucial time, it's no secret that most of us are educated enough as immer- and immersionally, immeasurably disappointed with the co- conduct of the current administrations. So for our next leaders and for our first-time voters, um, isipin natin that uh, officials should uh, not care about their status or name or any simple matter outside the nation's or the people's needs. Um, our country is really struggling in different sectors and um, we need people who can make decisions that place our citizens at top priority and make educated, justified decisions. And um, to answer also your question, kung paano natin um, uh, aalisin yung um, attention sa, ma- sa mga overly dramatic is, um, I think that the, the, the nation would be better off without overly dramatic officials as well. And my info. Thank you. Um, SR, kayo naman. Ganda po yung last part ni Caroline. <laughs> uh, sa tanong naman din po, uh, similar to how Prof. JJ answered it, and as I see it here in the comments, important po yung discernment. So the only way to distinguish it is to involve ourselves in more activities, uh, engage in political education, uh, um, kumagat sa iba't ibang mga affairs, activities para mas ma-inform tayo kung paano ba natin uh, makikita yung truth, yung reality doon sa beyond doon sa communication strategy ng isang candidate. Uh, so, pag syempre, uh, nakikita ko rin yung importance ng communication strategy, no? parang bilang bahagi ng isang bayan news yun yung parang lagi namin iniisip, paano ba, to, paano ba kami magka-come across sa, sa masa, ganyan. Pero uh, nasa likod nun, dapat, ay yung mga pagsagot, yung meet ng gusto nating mangyari. So, yung public proposals nila, yung platforms nila, maayos ba? Cookie cutter ba? Um, meron ba silang dala na bago or responsive? doon sa situation na natin na ninaranasan ngayon or parang is it more of the same old uh, does it criticize yung nakikita ba niya yung mali nakikita ba niya yung kayang i-improve ng current situation or does it pander to the present people in power simply because uh, hindi siya willing i-rebut ito or ayaw niyang makakita ng heat ito ay just some pointers that you can uh um, be use as a guide para makita kung genuine ba yung tao behind the campaign. Uh, and of course, I it's also important to note that the candidate is not alone in forwarding kung ano man yung platform niyan. Yung dala ng candidate, dala niya yung background niya. It means dala niya yung connections na meron siya. Uh, so, yung mga people surrounding that person will also dictate yung mga policies na um, ilalabas niya. So, yung only answer to it really is um, wag tayong bumitaw, wag tayong maging satisfied sa una nating nakikita. Lalimin pa natin yung kaalaman natin uh, through one, capacitating ourselves to read uh, political messaging and two, um, actually reading the political messaging. Thanks, SR. Uh, this question is for Dr. Louie. 
Um, the question is, um, maybe you could reiterate yung mga nabagay to kanina, sir. No? Pero the question is, uh, what have you observed as the biggest mistake or wrong mindset among voters for the past years or election seasons? Mm, okay. I think I think one of the, the most prominent is, and na, nabanggit na din ito kanina, is yung idea na my vote is just one vote. Na if, if we have that mindset... Uh, and a good number of us have the same mindset, then ano na lang yung mangyayari, di ba? I mean, kung ang iniisip natin ay iisa lang tayo, syempre, mahirap, mahirap i-wrap around yung idea na how can one vote make that change? But that's that's actually what we would want to to push as a message, that even one vote is essential, is very significant. So, um, wag natin iisipin na dahil isa lang yung boto natin, it will not be, it will not affect the, the outcome of the elections. At uh, hindi na tayo boboto. Kasi nga kung madami tayo na gano'n ang, ang iniisip, then wala talagang mangyayari sa atin. Hindi natin makukuha yung dami ng boto na gusto natin na, na mag-participate. Um, that and siguro second is yung question ng winability ng candidate. Kung, kung doon tayo nakafocus sa, sa winability na iboboto natin siya kasi uh, siya yung most probably mananalo or hindi na natin iboboto yung gusto nating talagang iboto dahil feeling natin kahit iboto natin siya, hindi naman talaga siya mananalo. So ito yung mga... Uh, uh, negative i neg- negative ideas i think na pwede natin uh, or dapat nating tignan dapat nating pag-aralan ulit para hindi siya uh, maging hindi siya makaapekto sa maganda sanang iresulta ng elections sa 2022 so never never think that you're just one vote and never think that since you think that the candidate is not winnable, you will not vote them and instead vote for someone who is uh, popular as, as defined by JJ. Thanks, Dr. Louis. Uh, next question is for Dr. JJ. Pero there's a follow-up for you uh, again, uh, Dr. Louis, after this talk. Because it's about family. So, um, institutions so let in. Um, yeah. So, the question for you, Dr. JJ, is... Um, can generational gap be a factor as to why older generation tends to stick to the makatribo thinking? If so, how can we prevent this kind of thinking since the older generation, especially within families, are the first people to influence the younger people? Ah, okay. Interesting point about generational gap. Yes, that's true. May mga tao kasi, yung mga sinaunan sa atin, yung mga parents, ganun mag-isip, katribo, kamag-anak, and so on and so forth. Yung mga kaani, yung ganun klaseng pag-iisip na, na hindi naman siya makaluma eh. Pero ganun yung tendency ng mga tao talaga eh. Diba? Kung sino yung kain mo, yung katropa mo, doon ka papabor. Yan yung pala effect eh. Pero on the other hand, kayo na nandito ngayon sa forum na to, na nakikinig, maaaring iba na yung pag-iisip nyo eh. At kayo ang may numbers. Tayo yung may numbers, hindi sila. Kung titignan mo yung graph nga na pinakita ni Sir James Jimenez kanina, tayo yung nasa majority. So, kung lumabas yung ating ganitong klaseng pag-iisip, na nag-iisip tayo ng matuwid tungkol sa ano ba talaga ang tamang iboto o sino ba talaga ang tamang iboto, then yung dominance ng old generation mawawala. Kasi we're working by the numbers lang naman. Eh. Popular vote. Not popularity vote, popular vote lang. So yun yung ano natin. We have that num- we have the number. So if we our voice is heard by our vote, then masisway na yung old generation. Ngayon, benta rin ako dun sa sinabi ni Sir James then about it's our time. Kasi yung mga nasa ages 18 to 40, we are the young ones. Eh. Tayo na yung mag magdidikta kung ano yung mangyayari dito sa ating lipunan. So dapat tayo maging active. Kasi hindi na natin titignan yung mga parents natin na 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Eh. Kasi iba na yung kanilang pag-iisip. Lipas na yung kanilang generation. Of course, kailangan natin yung matuto sa kanila. Kailangan natin uh, makita kung ano yung mga positive na nabigay nila sa atin. Pero obviously, we need to improve and we have the capability to improve given our life. 
Thanks. And very quick follow up. Thank you, Dr. JJ, you know, to Dr. Lugi, because we're talking about family. So, for for younger voters, bilang mga anak na kanilang mga magulang, where do we draw the line? Kasi syempre, di ba, nakikinig tayo sa mga magulang natin, sumusunod tayo sa kanila. It's very cultural, di ba, yung seniority. So, where do we draw the line, especially when we're talking about uh, election? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Masensitibo talaga na usapin kapag... Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, pumapasok na yung politika sa pamilya o yung diskusyon ng politika sa pamilya. Maraming nag-aaway dahil dyan. Uh, but uh, if you're asking is when to draw the line, then you have to consider um, the future. Kahit na gaano siya ka, ka, I don't know, superficial or something na, na ka-cliché na sabihin na ang pinag-uusapan natin ay yung hinaharap. Um, we have to consider that when we engage in a discourse with any member of the family. First, of course, hindi mo maiaalis yung konsepto ng respeto. Um, pamilya yan, kadugu yan, kahit nagkakaiba kayo ng pananaw sa, sa politika at sa, sa lipunan, uh, kailangan i-engage mo sila still in a very respectful manner. Um, I think if you are uh, informed, then katulad nga ng masabi mo kanina, kung, kung mulat ka sa lipunan, kung mulat ka sa katotohanan, kasalanan na yung pumikit eh. So kung nakikita mo na, na, na ang diskusyon, ang diskurso sa pamilya ay uh, pumupunta sa direksyon na uh, dumedepende sila sa, sa fake news, o hindi tama yung impormasyon na nakukuha na nila, then bilang ikaw yung may access sa tamang impormasyon, um, i- i- ituon mo sila doon sa tamang impormasyon na yun. Kung pwede hindi mo yun i- i- ipilit sa kanila, sabihin mo, o oh, sige ma, o sige pa, o sige dito, ito, basahin mo to. Dito, panoorin mo to. Okay? Hindi mo kinakailangan na ikaw mismo yung magsabi na, hindi, mali ka, uh, mali yung pinagkukunan mo ng impormasyon. Hayaan mo na makita nila yung pinanggagalingan mo base sa impormasyon na nakukuha mo. Uh, so, respeto pa din. Una yon. Pangalawa, um, future eh. I mean, ang pinag-uusapan na natin ay yung buhay mo, buhay ng pamilya mo, buhay na, sa Pilipinas in 5-6 years from today. And in 5-6 years from today, Maaring ikaw na yung nagtatrabaho. Ikaw na yung nagbabayad ng tax. Ikaw na yung apektado ng lahat ng polisiya na ipapatupad at i-implement ng susunod na administrasyon. Yung mga magulang natin, pupwedeng nagtatrabaho pa din sila. Pupwedeng uh, yung iba sa kanila ay retirado na. Pero tayo bilang yung mga susunod na uh, 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 henerasyon, working force, providing for the economy, it's our future that we are talking about. So, um, hindi ko sinasabing maging disrespectful kayo sa magulang ninyo. Hindi ko sinasabing salungatin nyo sila. Ang, ang sinasabi ko ay bigyan nyo sila ng mas maraming oportunidad para mas maraming malaman, una. Pangalawa, iparamdam ninyo na kayo ay may alam at dahil kayo ay may alam, gusto ninyong makapag decision para sa inyo at para sa kinabukasan. I think that's a it's a, a good strategy on how to uh, uh, dis, discuss and and continue a discourse, especially about politics within the family. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Louis, and thank you to all our speakers. No, so now uh, we have reached our last question. This is a fast round for everyone on the panel. The question is: Sa tingin niyo, mulat na ba ang mga kabataan ngayon, at bakit niyo ito nasabi? Let's begin with Caroline. Caroline, go ahead. Um, yes, po. Um, of course, as part of the youth, I would have to say yes. Um, sa katulad ng sabi ko kanina, di ba? Di ba? We are often stereotyped as ignorant when we voice out our opinions on matters and issues that were past our time. But it is um, important for me to say that just because we're young does not mean that we are unaware. We are, we are not blinded. 
um, our generation grew up with access to information that helps develop our sense of awareness and responsibility towards social injustices. And of course, being woke is always going to be accompanied by toxic incidents, uh, mainly when um, their views differ from the norms, from um, our opinions. But and when we are lauded for freely speaking our mind, that's why coming mga kabataan, diba, we must also understand that one's duty to communicate is listening. Diba? Listening can also be a powerful political act. And all I'm saying here for, for this question is we are not afraid to ask the hows and the whys. Um, our generation is considered as the forefront advocates and activists for change. And we continue to realize that injustices left unchecked will affect us gravely. And, and that's why I think we continue to complain, we continue to be critical and participate in discussions that challenge the national concerns. Thank you, Caroline Jean Dicar from PUP. Let's hear it from SRNA Luico. Uh, yes, the answer po is yes. Mulat na po ang kabataan. At nakikita po natin to sa mga iba't ibang paraan nila na ine-express yung kanilang um, dissatisfaction, yung kanilang nakikita ang solusyon dito, at paano mas nai-involve in uh, uh, formal or informal um, authorities or parang places of authority na may exhibit yung mga solusyon na to. So nandito tayo sa social media, we are speaking out, on ground, I were organizing, uh, may mga mobilizations and rallies kung saan ay binubuga exactly yung mga pagtingin sa mga issue. Uh, so on the level of solutions, ay um, nandito yung mga iba't ibang proposals na meron yung kabataan, nandito yung kanilang tangible uh, research and efforts, yung mga publicity materials, yung reports, pinapakita kung paano nila dinadigest yung information na to. Uh, yung pagpasok nila in formal and informal centers of power to exhibit yung leadership, student councils, lumalakas yung kanilang involvement, dumadami yung mga organizations. Uh, even in yung mga, sa mga TikTok, yung mga parang gantong, and in like Facebook groups, uh, na yung mga aim dito ay pinapakita yung, nagbibigay lang ng advice on housing, ganyan, merong mga political discussions. So dahil dito nakikita natin na mas nagmumu- na nagiging mulat na yung kabataan, it's a matter of um, providing clear direction kung saan natatranslate yung kanilang kamulatan into action. And it starts with elections. Ito yung parang pinaka-minimalist na pagtingin natin sa democracy. The easiest way to participate. But also, nandito yung mga ating maximalist definition of democracy. Nandito yung pag-lobby ng bills pag-create ng bills. Nandito yung um, uh, pagpasok sa mga town hall, pagbibigay ng direct na advice sa ating mga uh, politicians na paano gumawa ng mga policy and solutions sa mga problema na to. So ayun po, marami po tayo. Kaya po yan. Okay. Thank you, SR. At Dr. JJ, kayo po. Ako medyo pragmatic ako eh. So mulat na ba kayo? Mulat na ba tayo? Abangan ang susunod na kabanata. Gusto kong makita yan sa mga ayo 2022 at sa mga hinaharap. Ayan, salamat sa hamon na yan, Dr. JJ. Ayan, sa lahat mga kapataan. Ikaw naman, Dr. Louie. Yeah, I was I was smiling because I was about to say the same thing as JJ. Ano? Yung, yung kalalabasan ng 2022 elections ang talagang magsasabi na na uh, yung yung generation ng kabataan na meron tayo ngayon ay ay mulat na siguro to add to that and to add to what Renee has mentioned uh, I I agree there should be a transition from the the thought yung pagiging mulat sa sa action sa ginagawa and I think on top of that is a collective effort I mean collect collective movement from the youth from the young people to take it to themselves na, na may gagawin sila, na susulong sila, at ito ay ginagawa nila para sa kanila, para sa sector ng youth. Salamat. Thanks, Dr. Louie. Thank you once again to everyone on our panel and to end our Q&A session. 
We'll be asking each of you to give your parting words to our youth voters, and we will give you a moment to think about that as we flash our Zoom panel evaluation poll on the screen. To our Zoom attendees, please take this moment to answer a quick poll of just five questions to show our panel our great appreciation. They have uh, graciously taken the time from their very hectic schedules to be with us today. Okay, so yeah, nakikita niyo sa inyong mga uh, Zoom ang ating uh, short poll. So pakisagot na lang po yan. Okay, so we'll just leave the poll open so you can continue keying in your answers as we proceed with our program. For the parting words, let's begin once again with Caroline Jean Ticar. Go ahead. Um, I just want to say that we have to be part of the solution and as the youth, um, we have to actively engage in the upcoming 2022 election. And of course, um, our sole power as young people of tomorrow is not just um, during the elections, but also after that. And to the, it, um, it is to the community as a whole, of course. Um, some would even say that we are watchdogs and storytellers. And um, lastly, kailangan natin i-assist yung ibang tao na magkaroon ng informed decision and to be involved. Um, wag natin hayaan na yung mga previous hindrances ay naging form of discouragement from us to register and exercise our vote. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. That's what, once again, that's Caroline Jean Dicar from PUP. Next, we have SR Renee Luisco. Renee, go ahead. Good morning. Uh, sa mga kabataan na nakakarinig at possibly mabasa to in live tweets, um, it's the time, uh, ito yung ating test para makita kung uh, talaga bang involved tayo, talaga bang we will be taking uh, the helm of the, our future. Ito na yung ating opportunity para mapakita kung anong klaseng leadership ang gusto natin um, uh, ipakita, ano yung gusto nating lipunan ang i-build uh, at, uh, sa kinabukasan. And uh, para naman mas maging involved tayo, uh, marami tayong layers na kailang i-breakthrough. There's the self, there's the personal, the family, the friends, there's the community, yung ating mga schools, yung ating mga organizations, and then there's the nation, kung saan magta-translate din sana yung ating small efforts cascading into larger um, effects na makaka-touch din sa puso, sa isip, ng kapokabataan, at uh, yung mga iba nating mga fellow citizens. So, sulong lang po, uh, at kung hindi pa, and sure kung hesitant tayo na maging involved, ay uh, small steps lang. Uh, simple TikTok, simple retweet, simple like, and then later, pasok sa mga gantong discussion, um, mag-discuss with your friends, yan, and then bumoto. Yan. And then, pagkatapos ng election, ay translate natin yung ating awareness, yung ating action, into more. Siyempre. Yun lang po. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Rene Luis ko. Now, let's hear it from Dr. Uh, JJ Joaquin. Go ahead po. Thanks, Jules. Thanks for the organizers of this forum. Been a pleasure working with you guys. Uh, so message na, lagi magtanong, bakit pa natin ginagawa itong pagboto? Para kanino to At paano ba natin dapat gawin? Thank you. All right, Thank you so much, Dr. JJ uh, Joaquin. Now let's hear it. Uh, last but not the least, Dr. Louis Benedict Ignacio. Thank you. Thank you, Jules. Uh, siguro, um, isa na lang, ano? Uh, for the young members, when you reflect you have to realize that uh, you are part of a larger society. Whatever you do affects other people and the society at large and vice versa. What is happening at the macro level, at the level of the society nation will affect you one way or another. So do not, uh, never ever uh, shrink yourself into just an individual because you are part of a society and you are a significant part of the society. Whether you vote, whether if you if you vote or if you not vote, will have rippling effects, not only to you, but to other people as well. Thank you, thank you. 
Salamat po for that reminder, Dr. Louis uh, Ignacio. Once again, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating panel. Bigyan natin sila ng isang virtual warm round of applause. Salamat po sa inyo para sa napaka-robust na discuss discussion on bata-bata mulat ka na ba, the Youth Vote 2022. And we are now sharing the panel evaluation uh, results on your screens right now. Ay, nakikita niyo po yan. Um, and a great percentage of our viewers have given us very high remarks for our panel. So that's more than 75% of our uh, participants uh, participated in this online poll. And as mentioned earlier, you're now launching our post-test so you can assess your progress, okay? Your progress in knowledge and understanding acquired from this webinar, okay? All right, so yan po nakikita po natin. Uh, the results from our Mentimeter. So thank you so much to all of you. Okay, so we will keep the post-test open in the background, okay, as we proceed with our program. Now, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce to you a public servant and the Bureau Chief in the Northern Mindanao from Philippine News Agency. He's also a part-time faculty at the Liceo de Cagayan University and University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines. To give the synthesis and closing remarks, please welcome the project lead for Bata Bata Mulat Ka na ba, the Youth Vote 2022, Nef Luxon. Go ahead, Bob. Thank you, Sir Jules. The Philippines Communication Society would like to thank our guests and panelists for sharing their time for this event. I hope we will still get the same or even better degree of participation in our future webinar series and online forum. Our guests have said a lot of insightful messages that revolve around the youth and their crucial role in the elections. As data would show, based on the statistics presented earlier by student regent Reneco, indeed, the youth sector can influence the social political dynamics in the 2022 elections and even to the future elections. Pomelec Director, James Jimenez even said that the youth, if they will muster their acts together, they should they could install leaders based on their majority votes, given that in 2019, the youths had around 22 million votes. In addition, this is why the youth must vote for future leaders who are consistent and have proactive participation in immersion to communities and being with minority groups, as what Ms. Caroline Picard mentioned mentioned in her presentation. Dr. Louis Ignacio said, while it's hard to assume for a unified vote, youth vote, but having political maturity is very important nonetheless. And Dr. Jeremiah Joaquin's three arguments on why we should vote gave us a realization that we need to deepen our, our, our understanding on the hows and whys of voting for the deserving candidates. Lastly, we go back to what Dr. Marco Saez's image showing Martin Luther King, giving us an important lesson that there are many ways in framing personalities and discourses that we need to exercise a critical mind. Matagal nang mulat ang mga kabataan, subalit kakatibat ng pagiging mulat ay ang pagkakaroon ng malawak na perspektibo na hindi lang sa iisang dimensyon o pananaw Tayo nakabase, bagi ng pagiging mulat, ang, pagki, ang pagkikilala o, o pagkilala sa ba't ibang paniniwala at opinyon ng iba. Bilang isang demokratikong lipunan, ating isaisip na maraming mga boses, mga pananaw na minsan hindi naaayon sa ating gusto. Ngunit ang mahalaga na ang pinili nating mga pananaw ay malaya nating naipapahayag. Naway ang pagiging mulat natin ay gabay sa isang mapayapa at sagradong eleksyon sa 2022. Maraming salamat po. All right, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo Nef Luxon for that uh, synthesis. Sana po ay marami po tayong natutunan sa webinar na ito and we are now sharing the post test results for our viewers. You can see on your screens. So yan po. Uh, 91 po ay nakapagparehistro at may 35 pa po tayong magpaparehistro bago matapos ang deadline. And the next part? Okay. Consistent pa rin po. Nangunguna dyan na gusto natin na makatao yung pagbabasihan natin sa pagpili 
sa isang kandidato. Sunundan ng pagiging matapat, integrity, among others. So maraming salamat po. And we can see distinct increase in knowledge and understanding of these issues by the post-test results. Okay? And those who have actively participated will get most out of this interactive program. As mentioned, this webinar is part of a series of the National Forum on Communication and Democracy. That's Philippine Elections 2022. PCS will be having a webinar every second Wednesday of the month until May 2022. So please mark your calendars. Next month, we'll be featuring campaign dynamics during the pandemic with Pia Honteveros as your host and moderator. So please stay tuned for updates in the PCS website or Facebook page. You can see right now on your screens uh, several details about that. This formally closes the first national a forum, the, se the second national forum. This is the first second. The first national forum on communication and democracy, Philippine elections 2022. And we look forward to your company again every second Wednesday of the month. That's uh, 9 to 11 a.m. Manila time. If you have not done uh, so yet, please register to vote. The future is in your hands. Once again, ako si Jules Giang, mula sa Rappler. On behalf of the Philippines Communication Society, let us strengthen our country's democrat democratic foundations through communication. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at mag-ingat po tayong lahat. Thank you.